And welcome, everybody, to Globebusters Up, Up, and Away in NASA's Booster Balloons. I am your host, Bob Xanadude60, and we are back with another great show for you today. Really looking forward to this one because we're going to kind of bust NASA dead to rights, and this is, uh, is going to be a beauty today. So we will be getting to that very shortly, but before I do that, i uh, got a full panel today. So we will start out uh, introducing the panel. First up, as always, we have Jaron from Jaronism. How are you doing today, Jaron? Uh, doing so good, Bob. Thank you very much, and happy to be here. It's a wet and dreary day here in California, but uh, nothing like Globusters to make it better. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. It's a beautiful day in Colorado here. We got tons of really? snow on the ground, but it's absolutely oh. gorgeous, clear blue skies. Oh, no, we've got uh, no visible sky. We've just got some uh, some whiteness, and it's very wet and windy and cold. So, And uh, by cold, you know, you know how we are in California here. If it's like 45, we're ready to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, re I remember that when I lived in Fresno. It would get down to 45, 50, and people would be going, oh, my God, it's so cold. And I'm just like, pansies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 50 degrees today, and I'm like all bundled up. I am wearing my very cool flat earth zip-up hoodie courtesy of Joe Mama. So shout out to Joe Mama for, oh, uh, yeah, he bought me a sweater there in uh, Dallas. That was very cool. Yeah, very I, like, I like Joe Mama. He's an awesome dude. Very awesome cool. dude. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, it was fantastic to hang out with him and spend some time with him. So, yeah, all's good. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's move on and uh, introduce our next panelist. Uh, back with us, uh, as always, is our very own Ben Taboo Conspiracy. How are you doing today, Ben? <laughs> I'm doing great. My mind is racing after this little, after what David posted. I'm just, I'm going crazy about it. <laughs> so I'm just watching video after video, trying to find more information. But anyway, I'm so excited about today. I've had a lot the last few days off, so I've been flooding the youtube channel with videos but uh it's been a lot of fun yeah i noticed it's uh it was pretty awesome all the all the videos you've been putting out and of course we're going to talk about a couple of those that uh we did this week which is pretty cool uh here in a minute but uh yeah excellent well good to have you with us sir and um i don't think let's see iru is not with us yet um he is on his way to his studio um and i believe david uh, will be joining us here very shortly so we will go ahead and move on to uh, Dr. Rodrigo Ferrari Nunez. How are you doing today, Rodrigo? Hello, Bob. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm here in, in Harlem. It's 9 p.m. from across the pond. It, it is pretty cold as well. It's been very busy, and uh, I'm quite excited for, for tonight. So a lot going on, and yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. Okay. Well, well welcome. 
All right. So, um, like I said, uh, David and Iru will be joining us shortly. Uh, David's on his way to his studio, and Iru is on his way to his studio. So let's go ahead and get a few things, a few little items of business uh, taken care of uh, before we move forward. And let me go ahead and go to this. Um, first thing I want to um, uh, talk about is the Globe Lie Euro Tour um, is on its final week. It ends on December 8th. And they, uh, of course, are just about out of funding again, and we'd really like to see them uh, make it to the end. So I have posted in the uh, in the show notes, and it's there already, guys, um, a link both to the uh, GoFundMe and also to their PayPal in case you want to make a donation to them and keep those wheels rolling uh, in Europe. Uh, the last week, hopefully, this will be a big finish for them. They've been doing an absolutely fabulous job. Um, I just can't thank them enough, and I know that uh, Nathan Thompson is talking about getting a uh, America tour going um, this year. And uh, so the only thing we need really is a is a nice vehicle for that. And I don't know if anybody out there has a uh, a camper that's uh, similar to the one that they're using in uh, the UK. But if so, um, you know, we we're talking about maybe decorating it up with stickers. Of course, it would be a temporary thing. But uh, if you do have something like that that you would like to, um, you know, contribute to a U.S. tour um, that, that uh, people could tour around and either uh, get a hold of me at uh, bob at journalism.com or Nathan Thompson, which I believe is in the chat, and he can post his email address there because I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, but you can get a hold of him and maybe we can get uh, something going in America because, uh, you know, I got to tell you guys, our... Our time on YouTube um, could be getting very, very short. So um, we really need to get going on this activism, and we have a lot of things to do in the next 10 days um, because I know that, uh, you know, YouTube has got some big plans, uh, especially, uh, you know, we've already gotten some insider information that Owen Benjamin's account is slated to be deleted on December 10th. Um, and that really sucks um, because he has been really uh, instrumental in exposing um, you know, the flat earth and just all kinds of stuff. I mean, he, you know, he talks about everything. He's an amazing person. He's an amazing truther. And, uh, yeah, of course they don't want people like that And anything that is the truth. They will be hiding it. Um, they, you know, they talked about that. And, they, and what's funny is they use the, uh, the excuse that it's just not going to be, uh, commercially viable. You know, the channels that they're, they're saying is not, are not commercially viable, which is utterly retarded. Because if there's anything that is commercially viable, it is flat Earth. Um, so, what do you think about this, Jaron? Uh, are you familiar with this uh, this this change that's coming up? I'm sure you are. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I just got to hold my breath and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, it's it's their platform, and you know, we're just living in it. So, uh, I did want to shout out to a couple of people I saw in the chat. Uh, Nathan Thompson posted his email address, so people can email him if they have any good ideas. I saw Doc Michael in there. It was cool to hang out with him in Dallas. Martin Leedke. I also saw D Murphy twenty five is in the house. So, uh, just a shout out to everybody in the chat. What do you think about it, Bob, as far as uh, what's going to be happening? Are you talking more about the children thing or the other thing? Uh, no, the children thing, you know, all they're doing with that is obviously they're saying that they're going to force people into saying, uh, well, this is either con uh, content for children or not. Um, right. And, you know, they don't because they especially don't want any truthers reaching children, right? I mean, that's, that's obvious not. to me. Um, and they have built in some pretty stiff penalties. So if you declare yourself as you know, creating content for children, well, first of all, they're going to take away your monetization. That's the first thing they're going to do. Um, right. and, and then they will also take away ability to comment uh, and also have live feed chats and all that stuff. I mean, it's really Orwellian. You know, it's like, yeah, gee, they're just so considerate of considering the children. So they're doing everything they can do to stop truth or messages from getting to children. And of course, if you violate that, that just gives them grounds to terminate your account. So, you know, they, right. they kind of get you coming and going. But, uh, you know, the, the article that, that I am looking at specifically is this prepareforchange.net. And it is saying YouTube is planning to delete all accounts that aren't commercially viable starting December 10th. Well, <laughs> that's, you know, that's really kind of a 
you know, I hate to say it a chicken shit way to, to describe it, but, um, <laughs> you know, because like I said, so many flat earth accounts are commercially viable. And, you know, like they said, you know, when somebody starts researching flat earth, they watch video after video after video for days, weeks, months. Right. And it just, right. it, it becomes an obsession. So anyway, so they're talking about it in the, um, the article here that uh, content creators everywhere are starting to panic about an upcoming policy change that threatens to eliminate all accounts and channels on Google owned video platform that are deemed to be no longer, no longer be commercially viable, blah, 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 blah. It just basically says that, Hey, uh, you know, if, if your channel does not either pull for the mainstream narrative or, uh, or opposes it, um, then you're going to be history. So, you know, there you have it. I think it sucks. And so I really think we need to um, start, anybody that's a content creator out there needs to start backing up their channel, make sure they have everything backed up, especially by the 10th. Um, and, um, you know, find another platform. Uh, you, you have any idea what kind of uh, other platforms, guys, that, that maybe we could use that are viable? Has anybody looked into it? No, I looked into it a while back, and it's just very, very costly. Um, you know, it, it is possible there's a couple venues out there, but it's very costly. As far as finding something that's free, like YouTube, uh, that's going to be the, the tough part. So, And by the way, I see that uh, Joe Mama did show up in the chat, so maybe he missed it, but I just wanted to say thank you again for my hoodie that I'm wearing today. So thanks, Joe Mama. But uh, no, I think that we just all need to keep doing what we're doing and if it does come to pass that we get eliminated that um we have a good kind of network where we can talk to each other about where we can be found after that you know i, I don't know if worrying is really uh worth the time or effort right now yeah oh well yeah worrying is is not really worth the time or effort but uh, i think preparing obviously is and maybe true you know next week on sunday we'll have some good you know i'm actually going to make some sort of a commitment by next sunday you know to let everybody know um you know we could do a simulcast on i don't know twitch possibly i have twitch accounts and uh, if anybody out there has really good suggestions and also what is that what is that one uh uh unauthorized tv do you know anything about that well that's that's owen benjamin's uh you know site him and vox day have unauthorized.tv but uh you know they they're inviting people to post there and be part of that but uh you know i, I haven't been invited and i don't think globusters has either but it, it's an it's an option that they can't do live streams so it's just one of the things that they're looking to add also because that would be huge if anybody could figure out a way to do live streams but i've looked into that and it's expensive, um, especially if you're going to have other people on your platform and they have to be loading too. It's thousands and thousands of dollars a month. So it's it's going to be Ooh. difficult. Ouch. Yeah. Well, bandwidth is expensive. There's no doubt about that. But, you so, know, so if we, who doesn't do the, the live streaming. Say the end. Who doesn't? Does BitChute, they don't do the, the live streaming? I'm not sure. I think uh, DLive does. Yeah, right. and so does Twitch, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I have an account on Twitch. And I know there's actually several of them that do it, but they just obviously do not get the notoriety. So again, this is where, you know, I think really making a consolidated site um, and having some people, you know, having a bunch of us come together and maybe using something like Flat Earth.us and really marketing the heck out of that. And then that way we can provide links to other platforms that are not censoring. And if they do... You know, it doesn't matter. Then we can move to another platform and, you know, we still would have our, our primary website that we're out there promoting to everybody, putting on billboards, putting on buses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think, you know, now's the time we got to get serious about this and uh, really get her done. So, yeah, I think as far as for live, DLive is the best one that I've seen so far. We've got, uh, you know, Nathan Stolman from Lift the Veil doing a pretty good job over there. So. Yeah. Yeah, and he's been he's been smart. He uses YouTube to uh, you know maybe load a fifteen minute video of him kind of uh, you know doing an overhead or overview of what he's going to be talking about, and then he goes live on uh, D Live and, and gets quite a few listeners over there. So so far, that's the best method I've seen. Okay, well that that's probably a good way to do it. And uh, I know that uh, there was also that Mike Adams had some sort of site, but I don't think he likes Flat Earther, so that's probably out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure if that ever came to fruition or not. I don't know if anybody else knows. 
Yeah, I don't either. Um, I don't. I haven't followed him um, ever since he kind of turned on uh, flat Earth. I kind of give me a bad taste in my mouth for him, even though I really did like his his health tips and stuff like that. So, in that area, I would still you know support him. But uh, obviously, you know, not everybody is on board with this, and we just kind of have to deal with that and and uh, deal with the people that are. So, there you have it. Sorry, go ahead. So, sorry, no, I I just saw that Nate and. Uh, complained that uh, DLive and Twitch had deleted some of his videos. So he was also going in the, uh, mm. towards having his own website. Well, in his last live stream, he mentioned, I think some of his videos have been deleted ah, from okay. this platform as well. So, Yeah, it's going to become more and more difficult, um, to say the least. So, um, you know, we've got to come up. You know, I'm sure something is going to happen. I'm not going to worry about it because... There are just too many truthers out there um, for something not to happen, and obviously there are people with money that that and are willing to, <laughs> to, to do this. And you know, we can also do this listener supported as well, um, even if we have to pay for this stuff to ensure that the message continues to get out. Um, because you know, like I said, <laughs> it, it kills me that YouTube does this because the, the only reason they're doing it, um, and and they don't care about their bottom line because they're their agenda uh, of what they're doing is far more important than the money because they can just, you know, print all the money they want. That doesn't matter to them. This is an agenda that, that centers around control. And um, so it doesn't really matter to them that they can delete all these money-making things. Like Owen Benjamin alone was, was making them a small fortune, you know, because they take 33% of uh, Super Chats, right? They take a third right off the top. And, uh, you know, they do that with everybody. So... Um, it's not like Flat Earth does not generate a lot of revenue and the conspiracy sites in general because they did far more than stupid, you know, cat videos. But, hey, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just wanted to they... add, I've, I've never boycotted anything, but if YouTube d does this, I really do mm -hmm. think we need to threaten them that every, everyone needs to threaten them that they will boycott YouTube forever. Yeah. If they, yeah. They, they start seeing millions of people saying that, it maybe they'll start to reconsider, but uh, like you said, maybe the, the doll, they're not interested in the money as much as they are in the programming. Hey, Bob, let me chime in here. Um, yeah, Dave. Ben, I, I totally agree with boycotting YouTube, but the problem with moving to the, these other sites is people that are sleeping that have no idea that anything is fake, um, they're all on YouTube. They don't even know about the uh, this apocalypse coming, this YouTube uh, censorship apocalypse. And they're all there. So boycotting YouTube um, isn't – I don't think that's the greatest idea. A better way, in my opinion, is to um, keep trying to reach the people, the sleeping people on YouTube. But any ads that we see on YouTube go on our boycott forever list. So if we see an ad on YouTube, <laughs> we boycott that company and we let them know that we saw them on YouTube and we're therefore, even though we like their product, we're not going to buy it anymore. Oh, um, that's a great idea. That, that's how you Pretty good. Because, because if we all go over to DTube or DLive or, or, or Library or whatever, um, those sites are pretty cool, but everyone over there is already awake. Okay, you have very few sleeping people over there. Um, we need to reach people. We need to, you know, reach out and, and get to the people that aren't, don't know about Flat Earth. Because if we all go over to Flat Earth, you know, somewhere else, we, we've just put ourselves in a little cell and we are now completely preaching to the choir, which is important, but we need to get out to other people. Yeah, you know, I was wondering what would happen if, you know, if, say, for example, on the 10th, they deleted Globusters, okay? Um, and, and first of all, guys, if that happens, um, we would start doing the show on Globusters 2. Uh, and then we also have the Globusters 24-7, you know, whatever. We will use our resources as, you know, as they are available. But what would happen then? So, the, so say it depends, December 10th, they deleted Globusters. And then I just recreated another channel called Globusters and just started all over again. Um, you know, at least the name would be out there and people would, you know, be searching it and trying to find it. So it, I think, you know. It all depends on what they do. If if they're really trying to stop us from spreading any further, they don't care about us anymore because we already know. They care about us infecting all of the sleeping people and waking them up. So if, if they if they're going to do this, they 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 shut us all down on the tenth at nine a.m. or whatever. 
um, that's going to be highly effective for them. It'll probably blow up in their face in their face some other way, but um, I'm not that worried about it. But it's a good. I I kind of think that they might go full out and just get rid of all demonetized channels, and um, you know that that's a super fast way to do it. It's also quite desperate, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, how do they define hmm. how do they define uh, commercially viable? Because the, they've demonetized us, therefore we're just using server space. They can't make money off of us because we're demonetized. Therefore, they have to, you know, support their investors and therefore uh, get rid of the dead weight. And we're all dead weight. Well, maybe that's yeah, a good sign for us then, because we Globusters, believe it or not, is not demonetized. And Jaron, check this out. You know, I told you, uh, you know, a couple months ago that that Globusters too was eligible for channel memberships and still is to this day. And as of about 10 days ago, so is Globusters. Now, Globusters is eligible for channel memberships. So I'm like, what the really? hell is going on here? Yeah. You might want to double check your journalism. Yeah. Well, Hello, no, I, everyone. Yeah, I, I, hey, Iru. What's hey, Iru. How are you doing? And uh, sorry for interrupt you, but my channel with only 4,000 subscribers, uh, um, it's also available to, monitor, uh, to memberships. So they, they must be changed something in the uh, politics. Yeah, I don't remember if you remember, Bob. I've been I've had that eligible on my channel for at least three months. I just never turned it on. Remember, we talked about why. Oh, I that's it right. Better to, yeah, I, I, you know, I've always thought that staying under the radar is the best possible thing. So I figured the second I turned on channel memberships, that's going to put you into a new class of channels where you're definitely going to be watched a lot more closer. And so I've just never turned it on. But uh, interesting that, yeah, we all weren't eligible. And then slowly over the last three months, it seems like they've turned it all on. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's safe or not. You know, yeah. uh, another quick thing that people should remember, if uh, all of our channels get deleted, they don't, you know, the people that subscribe to us, they don't get notifications. We're just gone. You know, the videos that were there just say gone doesn't even tell you what video it is. Like when I go to my playlist and there's a video missing, I don't know what video it was unless I remember specifically. So people right, should write down. Deleted. Yeah, should, people should write down the list of all their channels so they can go look for them. Um, one way that people can be notified is if there is this mass deletion, um, I can use the app notification system to send messages out. Hey, new channel over here, new Globusters, new, you know, Eru, uh, whatever. So I will be using that if you have the app. The other thing is that people need to be aware of. Truth Frequency Radio, of course, TFR Live, because that's something that even if they delete all of our channels, that you still have Jaronism Raw there, you still have Mark Sargent, you still have Rob Skiba, you still have Iron Realm Media, you still have Zen Garcia. Um, you know, that that website isn't going anywhere as far as we know. So, you know, hopefully people understand that that show or that channel or that website is free to watch or listen to anything live or within the week after that. Uh, so if anything drastic does happen, make sure you check out those yep. channels as we'll be telling everybody where to find everybody uh, going forward. So don't be too it, fearful. It, especially the best show on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. The best show on all of TVR, T TFR at 9 p.m. Eastern on Monday. On Monday. Right. On Monday night. Don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are pathetic. <laughs> I, I, I second that motion, Bob. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, uh, ridiculous. Yep, I don't know. And, and, and you know, Chris, uh, Chris offered me a, a, a slot at TFR a long time ago, and I'm sure it's probably still available. And I remember. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Who knows? Um, I kind of like TFR though. The only I just really wish we could do video on it because you know that's kind of what I'm all about is showing things. It's a show and tell thing for me, and, and it would be a very right. difficult transition. So. Yeah, I think people are happy, though, even if you're kind of showing videos to yourself or tell people where they can find them. I think it's a great thing. And I, I've talked about it many times, but you can and I didn't even mention Crow Triple Seven. Crow Triple Seven's on uh, TFR as well. So there's so many good channels there. And it's something that you'll get all of us to readily admit that, uh, you know, we asked is that we can really talk about anything. And the answer is yes. So you know, it's not very often you find a, a platform that will allow that that gets good listeners. I think Jaronism Raw gets. Uh, between 3,000 and 4,000 live listeners. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what it shows as far as iHeartRadio and the app and people listening online and people calling in. So, uh, you know, obviously we're getting a little good traction there. So just people, if everything goes wacky, 
uh, definitely check tfrlive.com and you know catch those shows. There's a show basically every night, right? I mean, if you're looking for flat Earth content, uh, you can find it there. There's tons of us. Yep, excellent. Okay, all right. So let's move on. A uh, couple other things before we get started into the main presentation. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Um, many of you guys know, I don't know if you know this or not, um, I just uh, mirrored a video by this gentleman um, yesterday, and he does, his music is really exceptional. I don't know if you guys are, are have heard it or not, but uh, uh, this song down here, the David J. Crone, Ends of the Earth, Captain Cook, Proof Flat Earth. Um, I mirrored that yesterday. Um, he is a relatively small channel, and I really want to help him out. His music is outstanding. Um, it's cool because we're friends on Facebook and I sent him a message the other day cause he was having some problems with yeah, comments not showing up and he was unaware that somehow his channel had got put on, um, you know, uh, approved before, you know, publishing comments. And he was thinking that YouTube was just banning him. So anyway, I sent a message and we got going on a, a great conversation. It turns out he's as big of a fan of the Globusters as uh, at least I am of him. And I'm sure, uh, you know, probably other people on this panel as well. But I just wanted to give him a plug, and uh, you know, if you are not familiar with him, uh, check him out on YouTube, David Jake uh, Caron, and it's a YouTube.com user, Knight of Who, um, and I will put that in the show notes afterwards. But uh, shout out to you, David! Great music, absolutely love it. Um, you know, he's uh, and Alex likes him too. You know, so I hear I have my two favorite music producers. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, it's just great, love it. So I thought it was I when I first started listening to it I thought it was something from the seventies or something like this. It sounded really he's a really great singer. The song's great. I, uh, I yeah, think great. yeah. He's got a lot of. Of course, it's you know he's totally a flat earther, and a lot of his stuff is about you know flat earth content. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know he d runs the videos in the background that are definitely flat earth associated. Really super nice guy. And uh, so yeah, I'm really happy to be able to promote him. And uh, you guys check out his work; you'll love it, guaranteed. All right. So, all right. Next up, um, Ben. This is something. This is a project that you and I did um, in Globusters Pro. We finally uh, we've been trying to kind of go on this hit and miss. And, and you know, we've interviewed a few people, and and you know, thank you very much to them. Um, but we're trying to you know come up with some some content that really really lends some backup credence to to flat earth so we finally got in touch with this gentleman um and he um his name is james and he was a u.s navy sonar technician and it's very interesting that you know once we did this this short interview with him and you know i have to apologize it wasn't ben's fault the, the audio problems i think that was my skype recording that was kind of messed up but uh, maybe Jera from the distance. In the yeah, shot. we had. Yeah, shut yeah. Jern it. was sorry. Shut it. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. Shut it. Yeah, no. Jern wasn't running the audio on this one, so we can't blame him. <laughs> I was. So, um, but anyway. So, uh, and I understand, uh, Ben, that you have heard from several other um, sonar techs. Yes, that that are confirming this. Yeah, we just got we got an email from someone who said he, he absolutely can confirm exactly what he said. But then I just got another comment from somebody else who uh, he said he was uh, ran the sonar on on submarines, and he said the submarine uh, sonar equipment was even better than what was on the surface, and that they could absolutely track other submarines a thousand miles away. Uh, so we have four additional sonar technicians who have come out and said that everything he said was true. That the, the, the sonar. Their, their 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 maps everything reflected a flat earth <laughs> gee why am i not surprised and then of course <laughs> you surprise here <laughs> <laughs> yep and then you came out with that video about the whales uh, being able to <laughs> sing whale song and communicate communicate up to four thousand miles away that's uh God, isn't that crazy it's just crazy that and, really uh, is i mean it, it, so apparently this acoustic shadow does not exist anywhere Except for, for, I mean, the, the acoustic shadow it just, just does not apply to the curvature for some reason. And we all know the reason why, but it's just actually kind of hilarious how, how they try to justify this, that uh, for some reason, the acoustic shadow just, just does not apply to a, a curvature hump that's 500 miles tall, which is just ridiculous. And yeah. something that I, I was wondering while I, I, I see the video was uh, this kind of a Equipment of technique could be used uh, also for penetrating the ground and you know trying to reach some kind of um, 
uh, like because this this geologists they say that they prove the the you know the nucleus of the the core of the earth via radar and sonar and all these the techni uh, techniques that they use with this kind of equipment similar to maybe with the submarine but uh, you know what i'm trying to to ask yeah absolutely um you know that's you know they're saying that that's how they're doing a lot of the you know, determining that the Earth is, you know, has a molten core is this ground penetrating radar, they're calling it. But I can't yes. possibly see how radar would work. But sonar, yeah, I can see that more definitely as more of a possibility uh, than radar. But, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it's hard to say. But I do remember that, uh, you know, Chris Monk, who was on here, said that, you know, when they got down to that layer about eight or nine miles deep, um, when they hit that uh, layer, it was like some sort of a slurry, um, a very compressed type of slurry, and they simply were not able to go any further. Even with uh, you know carbide tips right. or titanium drills, they just couldn't get any in, any deeper, which I find pretty fascinating. So, but yeah, I, yeah. Ben, I would I would love to uh, do a a show you know with these sonar techs or you know interview more of them. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. I hope we can get a few of them on there because, uh, I mean, they're all just confirming the same that there's it should be it should be uh, pointing to a curvature, but there is no curvature present in all of their sonar equipment. And uh, but I, I actually my, I still like the whales idea. You know, four thousand miles, a uh, five hundred mile hump of curvature between those two two wells and they can still communicate with each other i mean it's just amazing yeah. refraction my brother refraction <laughs> <laughs> like you're all this is the snake oil for the globe gravity you idiot <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry rodrigo were you gonna say something the no the seismologist the brazilian one who is a flat earther seismologist he explains all those techniques that he was talking about uh, but I don't really recommend talking to him so much because there's been so much trouble because uh, because of his guy. But still, seismologists uh, talk about that. Uh, it is a kind of sonar, something that reflects off the rocks. They do some readings and then they, they do some guesses. There are shadows that, that appear and then they extrapolate some curvature. So the, the guy basically says that it doesn't really work uh, and uh, it doesn't show a curvature essentially. Yeah, Those well. uh, that they say, uh, yeah, and and that all the the other models from geology that show anything, they work through a flat idea of a flat plane. Okay. Guys, if you can send me then the, the video so I can take a look. Oh yeah, that would be I awesome. Would. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and move on now, kind of to our main presentation. And guys, you're really going to like this one today. Um, we recently kind of tripped across uh, some gold mine material, and um, then I went ahead and did some back research on it. And uh, we're going to present something to you today that is utterly going to blow your mind. Um, and I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff has put out, has been put out over the years, piece by piece. But we're going to try and bring it all together uh, to you, for you today, with um, some new footage. Um, that was given to uh, David deep inside the rabbit hole. And uh, uh, I will definitely be giving appropriate credits out for all that here shortly. But um, before we do that, let's jump into a little bit of background, um, some of the things that, that I want you guys to understand. And we're going to start out with um, a video here that is titled New Technology That Makes Troops Invisible. Okay. Now, what this is about, guys, is there is obviously some very it used to be classified military technology and and this particular video um came out i believe in 2012 let me double check that yeah just 2012 so it's you know seven almost eight years ago um and you you know that when they release stuff like this they've obviously already had it for quite some time even though they're talking about oh yeah it's just on the drawing board and uh, all that stuff that's horse hockey but regardless, so this this uh, seven years ago video was taken out, and what it is about, it's about um, this technology that allows them it's to put this to make these uniforms out of this special material um, that is kind of made out of nanotechnology. And essentially, what it does is it takes the material 
Uh, it takes the scenery that is behind a troop and it kind of brings it and bends it around to what is in front of the troop. Now, there's also several other um, uh, types of this technology. And wow, who is typing? Who is slamming <laughs> their keyboard? Yeah. Rodrigo, yeah. Rodrigo, mute up for a second. Yeah. <laughs> No wait, I'm, I'm I am muted up. This is really weird. Maybe I'm I'm going. Something is wrong here. Wait, sorry guys. Okay, right, no problem. All right. So there's um, anyway, there's uh, all these other types of technology that I have seen that, uh, ironically, I had a hard time finding today, where they actually use cameras in front of like uh, tanks and ships and stuff like that, where they will take a picture of what is behind them, and then they actually are able to project it around to what's in front of them. That's one, one methodology. They also have this nanomaterial that allows them to uh, uh, bring and bend light around um, to them. And I'm just going to play a little bit of the CNN clip here uh, where they're talking about it, and we can kind of get an idea of where they're going with this. So here we go. Oops, let me unmute. Next multi-million dollar contract. This summer, he showed us the science behind every shape, size, and shade of these pixels. You now have your camouflage. So we're trying to trick the brain into seeing things that aren't actually there. Digital patterns recreate shapes already found in nature, and 3D layering creates depth and shadows where none exist. That's today's design, but developers already have one eye on tomorrow. What's coming up down the road and very quickly is the Harry Potter cloak. What is it? With that fictional cloak, Harry isn't just camouflaged, He's invisible. My body's gone. How invisible are we talking here? If I walked into a room with a soldier wearing one of these cloaks? You wouldn't see him at all. Uh, he would be completely invisible to you. This isn't make-believe. The military has seen the so-called quantum stealth technology. It works by bending the light around an object, even concealing most of a person's shadow. Imagine what that could do for a sniper hiding in a field, or the American pilots who ejected over Libya when their fighter jets crashed last year. They could actually pull out, uh, very similar to what they carry with a survival blanket, throw it over top of them, and unless you walked right into them, you wouldn't know that they were there. So what was once firmly in the world of make-believe could quickly become quite real. The science is in the special fabric, so... You don't need a power source or some instruction manual to make it work. Theoretically, any soldier, even in the most remote location, could quickly put it on and get it working. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, not even a power source is required. Um, the material itself is able to bend the light around, which, uh, you know, I don't purport to even know how that's done, but uh, obviously it exists. They're reporting on it. Um, they're using it. Um, it's real. Okay, great. Well, you yeah. know, uh, oh, go ahead, Rodrigo. Rodrigo. No, no, that was me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Not... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, no, you're, no. You, you guys all no, sound no, the just... same to me, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just want to start thinking, and, and sorry for interrupting, but I, I am not worried if a soldier used that. I am worried, I, I'm worried if a Jesuit used that, you know? Right. <laughs> okay. Well, the... There has been some sort of people are saying that the church is falling apart because the uh, circle of the ninth is is basically falling and got caught. So there's some something going on, and uh, the Pope's supposed to be kicked out by fe February. So there, there's oh, wow. quite a lot. The the Jesuits are getting ousted. Sorry, a lot of people are waking up to this. Here in Holland, people are leaving the church as well. People are not attending. Uh, in Canada, the biggest cathedral had like 30 people on a Sunday. So uh, there's some, some, some things happening there that might be good. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, um, so on your screen now, guys, um, is a video, and it's just got music playing in the background. But essentially, uh, you know, I've seen several videos on this where, you know, whether you believe in chemtrails or not or whatever these planes are spraying or not spraying, whatever, um, there have been several of these videos that have shown that, you know, for some reason – you cannot seem to see the plane that is actually dispersing these aerosols. Um, okay, but that's not really what we're focusing on, you know, today as far as the aerosols. What we're focusing on is the obvious stealth technology that they are using. 
right? And this is another application that obviously um, it doesn't show up in normal uh, standard everyday camera, uh, regular daylight um, type of lighting conditions. Um, you have to actually do all kinds of photo manipulation, uh, emboss it, reverse it, uh, manipulate contrast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But essentially what's happening though there is you are able to at least see the outline of the jet, even though you're not able to see any of the um, specific features of it, right? So, and this is something, guys, that, that people have been talking about for a, a decade, honestly. Uh, this has been going on for 10 years. I've been seeing stuff like this. And, uh, you know, they're, they're slowly but surely trying to bury uh, this type of technology in some ways. I don't think they really want people to understand that they're using it aerially, um, let alone for possibly, oh, rockets or balloons or anything like that. Of course, remind you, just think what would what you could do if you had a balloon that was made out of that camouflage material that the troops are using. Hmm. Well, that opens up some really interesting possibilities, right? So the idea here is to, you know, kind of uh, point out that this technology does exist. It is absolutely in use. Um, and <laughs> to think that NASA would not you know, include this as part of their arsenal of trickery, well, I think that would be kind of foolish, right? So um, where are we going with this? So let's move forward a little bit. Um, and I want to talk about a video that David released um, last week, and I'm going to go ahead and play it in the background while we're talking. Um, he released this, whoopsie, released this a few days ago or last week, whenever it was, David, November 30th. Oh, wow, I guess that was yesterday. Was it that? Wow. I thought no, it was no, no, this was, I, I lived what, that this is the second video of three. Oh, okay. All right. Um, well, anyway, um, what it's about is, you know, he made the rather bold assertion that these rocket boosters are actually blimps, right? And yeah, that's a, a pretty bold assertion to make, but um, to me, it didn't seem unreasonable at all because uh, if you guys have been following Globusters, you know that Jaron and I have been commenting for at least three years um, whenever we watch a rocket launch that it appears it's just it doesn't make any sense that something could lumber up so slowly and you know it's kind of like trying to balance a pencil on your fingertip and be able to have all those reactions you know happen so quickly um, that one single jet engine on a gimbal, or excuse me, rocket engine on a gimbal could possibly keep that thing under control. So we posited, you know, years ago, it's like, well, what if the that construct was actually filled up with helium, right? Um, if it was, then you would have a very definite element of vertical stability, and then it would seem like it was a lot more viable to to go up that slowly and, you know, kind of have a fireworks show behind it, whatever. Um, and we also have seen, you know, on every single launch, of course, it always goes horizontal and then starts descending, uh, you know, down to the ground. But the idea is, is that, you know, NASA being the largest consumer of helium in the world um, is using helium for a lot more than just, you know, what, what we would define as standard balloons. Um, I think David was very accurate in saying that this was a blimp. Um, it has some very definite uh, characteristics. It doesn't seem to want to fall uh, anywhere near as fast. And in fact, we're going to see that on his newest video that we're going to be premiering here shortly. But, uh, you know, so the idea of balloons being used uh, in military and uh, intelligence agency uh, projects is not unusual at all. And of course, we know that we've seen, you know, a million times that they're attaching satellite equipment on it, all kinds of equipment that can be used for communication. And we also know that there are literally tens of thousands of balloons above us at any time. And we have also considered the fact that, you know, as far as being able to manipulate these particular balloons, um, they NASA talks about these electrostatic tethers that they put on that essentially they, they release a long uh, conductive material behind the balloon and they apply a charge to it and it allows them to manipulate the altitude, the Z axis of the balloon going up and down. And this is, you know, 
this is out in the open technology. NASA doesn't deny it. Nobody denies it. Uh, we've seen spiders do the same thing, spider ballooning, same type of concept. In other words, you know, they've got these balloons, you know, being able to navigate them down to an art, and they can use a myriad of ways to navigate them, okay? So you look at things like this, and really the way that they act, and I think David did a really good job in pointing these out, is that, you know, they act a lot like they're, <laughs> they are filled full of helium and uh, not a 58,000 pound steel tank. Uh, it's just absurd, especially when you look at, at footage like this. So well, David, you, comment that, oh, yeah, yeah go for it. This. So we're supposed to believe that um, this tank is free falling. Okay. The 58,000 pounds, that's heavy. Um, look at the, that PVC pipe that's going along one side of it, going along the top side right now, and, the, and the, the pipe sticking out on the bottom. I would say, you know, if this thing is free falling, it would be turning. That would be grabbing the wind and turning it. This is just rotating like a Macy's Day parade balloon. It's just floating in the air, and it is not descending at all. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. And, and, and let me just add a, a comment on, the, on it, because okay. if you if you go to the military uh, industry from the, you know, Second World War, we have these uh, camouflage uh, inflate vehicles to, you know, uh, cheat the enemy. Uh, I, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, you have replicas, uh, super realistic uh, replicas pause that it. you can just inflate it and you have a tank, you have a plane, you have a uh, turret, you have uh, a, a complete, um, you know, a com complete uh, uh, um, row of vehicles uh, that are just uh, uh, vehicles that the, you inflate. It's, it's, it's based on the same technology. I mean, when you see this and you maybe think, no, but look how realistic uh, it, it looks, you know, all the details of, no, uh, that is really easy to do. I mean, they 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 have this technology, quote unquote, because this is not technology. This is just you know, <laughs> you can replicate yourself. But it's not crazy to think that this is a helium balloon with uh, this special shape no. to. Uh, it, you know, it it's crazy not to think this is a helium balloon. Exactly. Yeah, yeah completely. Bob, if you go I, back I, about 15, 20 seconds. There's a you're going to see something cross over the top of the of the blimp. A little, and it's it's. I zoomed in on it, and it appears to be like a piece of paper or something light. But whatever it is, it's a piece of garbage that goes is it, by. Is it that no, thing no, not, right here? No, no, no. not there. It, it literally goes across the very top of the back. It's like a white piece of paper. There it, there is. it is, right there. So, <laughs> so that shows you that this thing isn't falling at terminal velocity. It is drifting yeah. along with that piece of garbage, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I paste in the comment uh, section of the Skype uh, two images, one from the uh, Second World War and the other in, in our modern days. And you can clearly compare that with this kind of balloon. And it's the same thing. I mean, uh, they, they can they can do whatever they want with, uh, uh, you know, plastic uh, and helium. Completely yeah, agree. They, yeah, they use that to decoy the Germans and to pretend that they're in different places and to draw some exactly. fire. Yeah. 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 And then the That's... other thing is all of the fuel from this thing has five minutes or less to get out and get into the rockets of the shuttle. Where is the valve? Where is the tube that all of that fuel is going through at that speed? That's impossible. Yeah. It, look, it looks, it would sketchy. take hours to, to get the fuel out. Yeah, highly suspicious. And of course, they also, you know, in the, your upcoming video, they also talk about <laughs> that the space shuttle or the ISS, I guess, uh, comes around and catches it on its fall, you know, after it's an, an entire orbit, which, of course, is at 17,500 miles an hour is about 90 minutes, right? That's amazing. <laughs> that, should have, that should have been way on the ground long before that. Um, but, and, you know, and we'll, the other we'll see thing that. The other thing, falling, at, 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 I was, I don't know the answer to this, but um, that tank, they've shown it where it has some dents in it after it's been used, after they recover it. Wouldn't it hit the water? It doesn't have a, uh, a, a parachute, so it's hitting the water at whatever that terminal speed that it hits. 
wouldn't it just smash upon itself? I mean, hitting uh, the water at that speed is like concrete. Absolutely. Hitting it a, a terminal velocity between, you know, 100 and uh, 2550 miles an hour that would that would yeah that would absolutely destroy it and i don't think there's parachutes on it right but i've never seen one actually hit the ground so or hit the water so i don't know nobody has yeah but but we know it's happening uh, well actually no we don't know what's happening in fact that's what this whole damn show is about <laughs> so in fact we're going to we're going to posit something that we think is very likely uh what is going on so um, so anyway, this just gives you a little bit of background of where we're going with this. You know, I want you guys to be aware that there is this type of stealth technology, the military and the uh, intelligence agencies have been using it for quite some time. And of course, NASA, no surprise that they would be also. Um, so let's now move forward to the next video. And this one, you guys may remember uh, Planete Verit Veritas, uh, Robert Bassano. And um, back in uh, 2016, June 5th, 2016, um, he highlighted this particular interview um, with this uh, Lieutenant Colonel Harold E. Mitchell about the Corona program. Well, this document, of course, he was, he was smart enough to save this document. And um, by the way, the NSA has scrubbed this and sanitized uh, this off of the web. Fortunately, I kept it. And I have it, and I will make it available to everybody um, in a Google share after the the uh, show is over. But what this does is it, it's a description uh, of an interview that this guy has with one of these pilots that what he does in this Corona program is he goes out and they capture these balloons, um, not necessarily the space balloons, you know, uh, rocket booster balloons that we're talking about here, but just balloons in general, right? And these, of course, these balloons, really what they were carrying back at the time was the satellite equipment um, that, you know, the the government would like us to believe that is actually, you know, orbiting around at, uh, you know, ungodly speeds at ungodly altitudes around the Earth. But really, it's all on the, uh, all on balloons. And they had a military branch that was specifically um, chartered to go out and recover these. The, they had the highest priority of any military operation in the world, anywhere in the world. Um, they had top uh, clearance and priority. Um, not even base commanders could go on these things. It was ultra, super high, top secret, you know, cosmic, you know, whatever. And uh, this, this document is a fabulous read. And like I said, I will make that available. But what I want to do is I'm going to uh, have, play a little bit of Robert Bassano's um, uh, video that he did on this, and all credit to him because he's the first guy that really came out with this. This is a mind-blowing uh, episode uh, that he did. So we're going to listen to a few minutes of this, and uh, I want to you know just make people aware of what's going on with this. So let's listen to this part. The Corona program, okay? The Corona program is still a top-secret program. It was a program launched by the National Reconnaissance Office, okay, in conjunction with the CIA. It's supposed to, it, it's equipped with some very advanced optical equipment and photographic equipment to conduct mapping and, and reconnaissance uh, intelligence gathering capabilities, okay? So I have that document pulled up here for you guys that we're going to reference. We're going to need that program. So this is a letter actually drafted uh, August 21st, 1964, regarding a corona mission. Now, I need you to understand this. There were several corona missions. So this is the importance behind proving that this satellite was never launched on a fucking rocket. Okay? They had several missions. This satellite was put up on a gondola balloon it did its thing for however many days or months and then it was captured by a c-119 multi-engine turboprop u.s air force cargo plane specially outfitted to capture this thing on a to capture it using some sort of tail hook type of device okay so i'm not going to read now, I want people to remember that, a tail hook type of device. This is going to become really important here in a bit. 
uh, with something we have to show you. So just remember that, okay? Now let's keep going. This entire document, but there's specific sections of this document we're going to address. So I can prove to you guys that satellites are not floating around above 100, maybe 100, 200,000 feet. They are literally 10 to maybe 50,000 feet above the altitude where you two optimal flight range is. So, and I'll show that to you as well. Now, here's where he describes what the dragnet gondola looked like. What did, the, what did a dragnet gondola look like? Well, we use similar parachutes except the Corona program or Discoverer program only used one chute, okay? We used four 28 parachutes, 28 foot parachutes for a dragnet gondola and they did all of the chute modification at the parachute shop. They would attach four parachutes and then and and these were not reinforced parachutes they were just to lower the load the gondola and um you'd attach them to the gondola and then from the middle of this on a longer tether you would have a smaller chute that we call the drogue chute i think the drogue chute was 100 feet above the four descent chutes and the drogue chute was reinforced we could make our passes on that drogue chute okay when they say they can make their passes on that drogue chute, you're looking at a 100-foot tether, right? And what would happen is that the drogue chute would deploy. You got a 100-foot of tether. The plane didn't need to come within a, a, a dangerous distance of the chute as, the, as the, 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 the satellite was falling from the sky. And they'd be able, they'd have a hook at the back of the aircraft that would fly by and hook this chute and once they hooked it they start reeling it into the back of the aircraft okay if anybody's ever seen that um if you okay let's move here's some a little important bit. data the top of the gondola the top of the gondola had a compartment for the chutes and all that stuff and a lot of it had to be the parachutes but the whole capsule was 1450 pounds when it was airlifted okay the capsule they're talking about is literally the satellite. The gondola had, a, now I want you to pay attention to this. He says, he's, he's, this is Mitchell, Captain Mitchell talking. Captain Mitchell says the gondola had a huge balloon. I mean a huge balloon. You could see it at 60,000 to 85,000 feet, okay? That's what he says. Not only does he describe the balloon, but he's, he accentuates how big the balloon actually was. Now. This supports what I've been telling all of you, that NASA has had a balloon program literally for decades, decades, over, as long as they've been in existence. Some of these balloons are the size of a football field. And if you, I don't care if, if you could use the word football as in soccer or American football or rugby. When you- Okay, so basically, Robert, <laughs> Robert is is breaking this down, and he does a brilliant job of this, by the way, um, of exactly how they did these operations. You know, a, a half a century ago, right in the fifties, sixties, right. So obviously, we know that the technology has gotten bigger because if you can see these balloons at sixty to eighty-five thousand feet, well, now just think about if they were to make those balloons um, out of that. Uh, material that is the automatic uh, type cloaking, cloaking material and also used the cloaking material that they are using in these aircraft, right? Just think about that for a little bit, okay? So now what I want to show you, <laughs> and, and this is really amazing. This is also another part of his video, and he talks about in another video, and I'll put this in the show notes, he talks about a program called ARCA, right? And ARCA um, is this company that contracts, and essentially what they do is they are talking about being able to launch balloons or rockets from balloon platforms. And they even have a really nifty little animation um, that they can do this, you know, from water or um, anything like that. It, it's kind of amazing. And, and look at some of these pictures that they're actually using. Um, but, the, and, and of course these are animations, but you know, we're not claiming that they're real. 
But the idea is, is that, you know, this company, what they do is they specialize in stuff like this um, to be able to actually uh, launch these things from balloons. And again, remember, if we can make the balloons stealth, um, then you can only imagine what kind of nifty things they could do, right? So here they have, here's a few pictures of, you know, what they're actually doing with it. Whoopsie. And let me speed this up a little bit. And if you guys want to, you know, make any comments as I'm showing this in the background, um, by all means, feel free to. But um, here's an animation of them doing a launch at sea. Okay. And, you know, this is just really super interesting to watch. So here they've got the ship out there. They've got the balloon deployed out there. It's black. They're filling it up with helium. Um, and then after it goes up, then they can attach these boosters to it um, and, you know, launch them up. Now think about the, the SpaceX, the Falcon Heavy um, takeoffs and landings, guys. Think about those. First of all, they look phony as a $3 bill, but there are so many people that say, I've been there, I've seen it, I've seen this stuff. Well, you know what, if they're deploying this type of technology along with the stealth technology, all of a sudden this makes it really, really realistic. Um, and very, very possible. So we have a company here that's showing exactly how it's done. Uh, granted, this is an animation, but uh, this is you know what they do. And they're just showing that, yes, it's possible. Yes, they've thought about it. Look at that. Look at that thing go. Bada bing. You know, it's all kind of all coming together. And this, of course, is something else that Robert Pisano covered back in 2016. So I'm just trying to, you know, give you some pieces to this puzzle to kind of figure it all out yourself. And when you watch this, it will kind of become apparent to you that, uh, you know, we believe this is precisely, you know, how they're carrying off the SpaceX uh, Falcon Heavy illusions, um, how they're getting things to land, you know, in front of people and they're actually seeing it. And of course, remember, they have to keep them at a pretty good distance away um, from these launch sites and where they're actually touching down. So we're just kind of opening some possibilities for you. So uh, just wanted you to yeah, see that. Well, there was a the whole discussion as well that we had before about the distance to the actual rockets and how you can also trick people into thinking that they're actually larger than they are because people stay very far away from it. It's several miles away. They cannot see it up close. So they could play with the, with the sizes, which is kind of magic tricks. Uh, yeah, yeah, in fact, I, I have a... a a few pictures and video to compare size and how you lose the actual value. You, you, you lose the, the, the equipment at really low altitude. You, you are not able to see anymore. And uh, the only thing that you can see sometimes is just this, uh, the white part, which is really huge. It's when I reach the 30 to 50 kilometers up there, it's, uh, inflate as um, more big than the, the Statue of Liberty. So it's a really big one. And that is the only thing that you see. And sometimes for, uh, you know, because they need to, to put light on it because it's something that require via the FAA, the FAA. So, uh, you know, when the people says uh, or, or say that, ah, oh, no, I see satellite because I see this white dot you know crossing the sky at night is because uh, they are uh, self-illuminated because they need to it's just for air traffic uh, control so of course there are balloons you don't, yeah. you, you don't have all the choice you know yep. you guys got to love the symbology too that this company uses right <laughs> the, oh ve boy. the vector symbology with the swoosh and a balloon i mean that's so perfect <laughs> Well, I think that's the big the big thing that we're everybody's missing is the distances that these things are launched from. You know, it's so far away from the people, sometimes up to like eleven or ten miles, and the fact that the ocean area is completely cleared. So we've seen them already postpone launches because there's like a boat out in the ocean that shouldn't be there, and so they have to postpone the whole thing. They have to clear that whole channel where the uh, the boat is headed towards, and I mean where the rocket is headed towards just seems to be as obvious as get out. And and I totally agree with what Euro said earlier. None of this really should be surprising, um, you know, that they're basically masking all this and hiding it in, in whatever way that they can. Uh, and we're just starting to explore some of those ways. Can I share my screen for the first time? Certainly. Uh, I'll, I'll allow it. 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let, we'll let you do it. Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> uh, no, because I want just to illustrate for the people, uh, what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, let me know if I am presenting. You are presenting, yeah. sir. Okay. So, uh, the satellite, when you start to uh, compare, of course, you have the balloon uh, deployment via, you know, via balloon, and then you have the, all the show. And you know, they, they, because we need to leave clear that the satellite, they construct the satellite, of course, and there are real people involved, and right. you have all these, you know, things that they use to, you know, uh, brainwash, uh, you know, general public. Uh, the people that are inside of this, uh, you know, um, uh, warehouse uh, constructing the, the satellite, they don't need to know what's going on, you know, in the top layers of uh, uh, the business of satellite. In fact, uh, and I cannot present it because it's all in Spanish, but here in Argentina, we have, we, they use the satellite deployment as a political um, uh, instrument. They call the satellite sovereign. Uh, I don't know if I said the correct word, but it's like the president used this. We're going to put two satellites in orbit to have our own independency in, in the field of technology and communications. And they, you know, they use this like three months on televisions saying that all the money that we pay with taxes is going to be put in the satellite. So we're going to be more free in terms of the economic for you know transmitting communications it, it's really it's it's, it's really um uh, if i if i type in spanish right now uh, soberania yeah, sovereignty yeah. yeah sovereignty satellite sovereignty you're going to have all these super mass because this is our space agency and they use the same kind of manual they create all these which is all tropospheric and uh, you know ionosphere bounds but they use this is our actual president. Uh, they they use all these you know people. They they make all the complete show. They they have all this manual. Uh, you know like we're gonna put we 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 build the satellite. We put inside this plane. We send it to SpaceX and you know all the commissions of the you know the bureaucrats and politics uh, fly in this plane. They reach SpaceX. They are in a special uh, seat there, watching all the show, and then they come back to Argentina and say, "We we put the satellite in orbit, so in three days we're gonna start transmitting." And the and the funny thing is that, and this is for real, and I I, I can show the article. Uh, these two satellites, because this is the Arsat two, three months later, that supposedly it's in orbit, we sell it to the same company that they put it, which was a, a French company. <laughs> so they are not anymore of us. They sell it, you know, but they create, a, this front. is the word, this is the word sell it. You know, our flat one is sell. <laughs> so what's going on? I mean, we build it, we spend thousand and thousand of, um, you know, dollars. We put in orbit, they create all these show business. And three months later, we sell it. So we are not be sovereign anymore. So it's a complete show, of course. And when you go to, like I tell you, like real things, this is the real things, which is in the, in the right of the screen. And this is all the show. And maybe the people, they believe that they put this thing in orbit because they wait three, three days, you know, they receive the signal and they only watch in, 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 is a monitor. Uh, that that is the only thing. And in fact, for example, this was the company that supposedly put our satellite in orbit, which is a French company uh, called Aerospace, uh, Ariane Space, sorry. And they use all the time for this live streaming, they use the same thing. I mean, they use the same video footage. Well, supposedly there are different days, different times of the year, different years, different uh, uh, models of the <laughs> supposedly yeah, uh, satellite, and they use like for for brainwashing the people. They say, well, right now we're going to deploy the the payload, so we're going to split the capsule, and there you go. You can see the beautiful Earth uh, uh, beneath, you know, with the with the sun shining behind, and they use 
all the same thing. I mean, literally, it's the same video footage. <laughs> you, you, so, well, then you have the Corona space program. You have the same thing uh, that we have in modern days, but at the 50s and the 60s, you know, real people building things that they're not going to be anywhere or maybe hanging on balloon. This is official uh, animation at that time. And this is the Thunderbird, uh, you know, the Thunderbirds uh, Hollywood production. So you have the same, exactly the same thing. This is on the news and this is on the TV chess series. For kids. Then you have, yeah, for kids and for adults. Then you have the <laughs> the real thing, you know, the military pushing, uh, trying to, you know, test all this uh, technology that they use to, in even in our days, then you have the planes trying to recover uh, the satellites before touching the ground on the air. They, they recovering on the air at that time, of course, because that is part of the hiding uh, these uh, techniques. In our modern days, this is an old news, but we have all these news in the television says that uh, satellite falling down in the backyard or some people, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then you have the telescope itself, uh, th that that supposedly made by Hubble. We have the Sophia plane, but they only use balloons to hang in on real telescope to do supposedly what you're going to do with the Hubble. But they mapping all these parts of the night sky via that satellite. And look, look at how amazing is this uh, coincidence, because they scanning all the um, Milky Way, the, the big rift, and they, after doing this, they supposedly use the COVID satellite probe, uh, probe to say that we have the, back, the microwave background radiation. But they use also this technology. So the, the image that you present uh, as the background uh, radiation, right? Uh, microwave, uh, microwave background radiation. Code. For example, this image is from that kind of technology or it's from, from a satellite? Is it from this satellite or is from that kind of technology? So, because they, they use this high altitude balloon because they need to take away the atmospheric distortion. So they need to map in all these um, supposedly, you know, uh, uh, outer space uh, pictures uh, high, really high above the atmosphere for, you know, because you don't need to have that uh, distortion. So when you're talking about satellite, they, um, deploy from the ground or maybe to from the sea like you you showed before this is the same balloon this same balloon look compare the size this is a super big truck this is the balloon then you right. have at, at three kilometers you can see this yeah and and when they're clear like that they don't even need to use um you know stealthing technology because obviously you can see right through them um whatever is behind them blue sky clouds whatever you can see right through it so um, yeah, they, yeah. they really have all their bases covered. Um, that's exactly. So you have three kilometers, this image, this is a really good definition camera, high definition camera with a super, super zoom. And look how the equipment is, is tiny, tiny. This is the, the, the size of the, uh, the Statue of Liberty right now at that point. Yeah. This is the, the this just out of focus point is the equipment and the cable that is hanging on from the balloon is even, you cannot even look, uh, you know, you cannot even detect it. So this is just up 15 kilometers, all right? So imagine this same thing, 40, 50 kilometers in the straight line path because they have the super pressure balloon. This is a standard balloons and this is a super pressure. So when you see this in the sky, when you see this, you know, tiny point that is crossing, this is just this. This is not a out of, you know, uh, out of pace technology. This is inside us. That's right. It's, it's only. It's right here in our atmosphere, and and yes, that also that also stands to reason why you know people say, well, I can see satellites going over the night sky. It's like, 
again, you know, just like in my presentation uh, that I did in Dallas, you have to think about the angular size and also, you know, how could it possibly be catching the light and reflecting it continuously? Um, you know, these things are up and they are local in our atmosphere and they're not very high. And when they are being illuminated, um, you know, you they are rather sporadic uh, on and off, but they certainly are not 23,000 miles up or any, you know, anything even resembling that. So. No, no way, no way. In fact, here you have all the, the like, storyboard of, you know, they reach the satellite and as soon as, you know, going up, uh, you don't see anymore. I mean, the, the equipment you are not able to see anymore. Because the people need to remember this. When you see that white dot in the sky, you think that that is actual equipment, not something that is hanging on in space. Supposedly, you believe that shiny light is the, the solar panels. Right. It's not. Right? It's the it's, balloon it's, itself. It's, exactly. It's supposedly, you are seeing 1,000 kilometers up there. This tiny equipment reflecting light but the, the thing that you are seeing is actually the balloon mm -hmm. it's actually the balloon not equipment you are not able to see it. this balloon is in the middle of the day with the sun shining on it and you are not going able to see even the 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 the, the panels right now so right. when you are in the in the night sky it's impossible that you see a shining mirror from the solar panels. Right. Wake up, people. I mean, <laughs> you are. So, so you said that they have to be illuminated at night because of tra air traffic, you do? Yeah, uh, I have here. <laughs> yes, I have here. I don't say every single one, but I have here uh, a satellite deployment from the night and they put, uh, they turn on uh, like a light device that they turn it on and then send it to the sky. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. If it's in our atmosphere, yes, absolutely. Because, you know, the aircraft could run into it. They absolutely right. have to have some sort of beacon uh, marker lights. In fact, we had to have that with our balloon. Um, right. So, that. Yeah. yep. Well, that's, that, that, that's right. I mean, I don't say everyone it's uh, self-illuminated, but who knows? I mean, and in fact, if you think in terms of uh, flat Earth and you have... Um, uh, for I, I put this image as, as a um, uh, clear background, but imagine that this this line here is, you know, uh, the top of the sky, and you have a balloon here, and you have the sun over Africa. You're gonna have direct light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean that is possible in the flatter, but in the spherical Earth, with a satellite supposedly 300 kilometers up in the middle of the night, which is must be in the opposite side of the sun, how the light is bending over the atmosphere and, and hitting the, the balloon in the night right. side of the world. Right. But in the flat earth, you can have it. Yep. So, so anyway, so essentially, you know, Iru is showing this, uh, the same thing that Robert Bassano is, you know, the, this type of, of satellite, quote unquote, satellite deployments on balloons. But, you know, like I said, David kind of took it to another level and, you know, went where Jaron and I did and, and asserted that these booster tanks are actually balloons in and of themselves. Well, you know, that's kind of a, a, a pretty, pretty bold claim. But guys, guess what? We have some evidence of that. We have some really good evidence of that. <laughs> and that's coming up uh, really soon, so don't go anywhere. And uh, okay, you go ahead and finish sharing. up. Uh, oh, okay. All yeah, right. no, this was this was you know talking about the balloons. This this are a, a picture from the early uh, 40s in the war. This is a uh, you know a, an inflate of a replica of the tank. You know because at distance you can cheat the enemy, and then you have in our modern days they are still using. They are still creating these inflate models of uh, war vehicles and not just war vehicles, they, they, they use, uh, uh, they create planes, they create spaceships, they create anything you want. In fact, not just they create it, they paint it as a real. Look, the, the supposedly tan tracks here or, or the camouflage or they, they paint the dirt because they 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 use like a camera mapping technique that we use in, in the special in the visual effects industry. I mean, you can model in 3D. You use real picture with all the decal, the, the, the you know decals, the, the dirt, 
the scratches, everything, and you print it and you have a replica, super real replica, but uh, it's more cheap than actually build the tank, you, you know? Well, the thing, the, the thing thing happened in the in the sky. Uh, it's totally clear. I mean, it's, it's the way it is. Yep. All right. I, I'm stop sharing. You know? Beautiful. Thank you for that, Iru. And let me go ahead and reshare with you guys. All right, everybody should, we should all be on the same page. So, so, all right. So again, we're seeing that, you know, this balloon technology is very real. The aircraft stealthing technology is really real. So where does this all come into this whole booster balloons that this show is titled about? Well, um, we're about to show that. And David, I don't know, before we're going to world premiere a new video by David, but before we get to that, I want to, Kind of give credit where credit is due and that was on your video david um, yeah the video the video from yesterday the pinned comment um i could look it up real quick i it think was, i have it here by teddy c yeah teddy yep. c pointed it out and uh, i had seen it go by and uh, so did uh william gensky and uh, we both just subconsciously wrote it off as ah, that's just debris or something and didn't go back and look. Yep. So. so hat tip to Teddy C. And that comes from this video, um, which was posted by Who Me Eats Pineapples. Uh, you know, I'm sure he's a glober because he thinks that sit back and enjoy the music. You know, he thinks that this is real, I'm sure. But it came from here. This will also be in the show notes. And uh, I'm sure this is posted all over the place. Anyway. That is a NASA video. That's just the mirror of a NASA video. I have the NASA video linked in the description of the video you're about to premiere for anybody that wants to tear it apart themselves. All right. Perfect. All right. So um, let me get over to the uh, video we're going to premiere. All right, guys. So this is David uh, basically put the pieces together. He slowed everything down. Um, you know, added a little bit of enhancement to it so you can see it. And while you're watching this, guys, remember what we said about, you know, the stealth technology, the way that they need to capture it, especially that little tail hook thing. Um, you know, they're still using the exact same technologies today. So NASA kind of blew it on this one. And, you know, this, this opens up a whole new possibility of investigation, um, guys. And I will say that now that we know what to look for, um, I think that maybe a lot more of this stuff is going to come out, especially for those that are out at the live launches. You know, if you have some super zoom equipment or anything like that, um, and maybe be able to look at it under different spectrums and, you know, infrared possibly, whatever. I have a feeling we might just find some stuff up there, you know, by these uh, alleged spacecraft. So let's go ahead and world premiere David's video and uh, sit back, relax, three minutes and 39 seconds. Um, here we go. Off it up again, and so now we're seeing some more of that video of the external tank shot by Mike Fink after Endeavour's orbit. Shot by Mike Fink after Endeavour's orbit. Shot by Mike Fink after Endeavour's orbit. Shot by Mike Fink after Endeavor's orbit. P brain here. Guess where I am? You guessed it, on the ISS. A secret mission. They flew me up here. They wanted me to see that the ISS was real and the Earth is a ball. And I got to tell you, the Earth is a ball. Pacific, just guys, wanted you to see this. The Earth is not flat. Uh oh. <laughs> just kidding. This is a picture from my front yard. Don't be fooled.
super Brilliant. nice. <laughs> yeah. It's the white knight. Uh, it's not the black knight, you know? <laughs> the, the white knight satellite. <laughs> yeah, the white knight satellite. Exactly. And so, guys, take a look at this thing. And look what appears to be coming out from the tail. It almost looks like a hook apparatus. Um, it's hard to tell, obviously, because, you know, it's very, very much camouflaged. And I'm sure a lot more video processing may be able to give us some more details. But, again, it appears that they are using the same old tech that they've been using for a half a century um, to recover balloons, except this time, this way they can do it right in front of people's face and they can never even see it, just like we showed on the uh, chemtrail uh, spraying aircraft. You know, you can't see the aircraft. It seems to be invisible, but it's absolutely there. And, uh, wow. you know. Brilliant. But yeah, David. yeah, some of the some of the wizardry that they do here, they um, had the the trip where they had to take the tank on a truck from a canal and they had to take it like through a whole bunch of towns and remove street lights. Oh, and uh, that's a different tank. That's a metal tank. I'm assuming that's metal. I don't, I don't know if anyone gets to touch it, but in case they do, that's a metal tank. Then they have maybe a smaller one that they actually launch off because I don't believe large rockets can work because they have to carry too much fuel and then the engines can't lift what's there. Um, this thing uh, was presented to us as falling out of the sky after the fake rocket launch. This could have been filmed anytime. I doubt it was filmed that day. It was probably, they probably right. just it's probably a lightweight nylon balloon that could have been carried down Fifth Avenue on Thanksgiving. And um, it's just floating in the sky. They got a helicopter following it and they're filming it and filming it and filming it. And then they have their recovery vehicle and that's it. I mean, maybe when that thing hooks onto it, it just pulls it inside, you know, deflates it. And, and that's the end of it. And they have their footage that's, uh, you know, not fake footage. It's of a thing in the air. Yep. And, you know, what's interesting is, is, you know, on the original footage, and I will have that in the show notes as well, um, Two things. Well, obviously, they're trying to make it appear like they're actually looking at this from the inside of the ISS. Simple CGI. I mean, let's face it. Jaron, you know, had an outer space Jaren view in his toilet. His and right. his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but Jaron was moving his camera around, make sure we got the window edge in there. Because if you just put it on the green screen, there's nothing to relate it to. You don't know. I flip right. this video around left, right. It doesn't matter which way you flip it. You can't tell if you're looking up or down. Can you see any land features at all? None, and there's right? uh, zero land features again. There's always, I've looked at several videos of this. There's never any land features. And you, you have, have to, to be also on a wonder. string taken from the ground up. It could yeah, be. I mean, it, it could be. I'm, I'm looking at the light, though. I, I It, it kind of looks like the light's above, but who knows what time of day it was done. But you know, the, the thing, David, is that sometimes we try to match this as uh, it was real live real time event it was they not just, real. right exactly they just play the, the, the touch a button that say play and they put this map maybe this was created in the hollywood studio that which is going to be really easy uh you know two sure, I don't months think so. later I, two I months away so, because if they fake it in a studio with green screens and stuff there's too many photo forensic things that we can do to figure that out they need okay. real footage of something in the sky and why not just put up this ridiculous blimp with no way for the fuel to get out of it no way that thing can go Mach 22 i mean with those those pieces of metal sticking out and, and what about the bolts that hold it on to the rocket you know that's well, that's insanity that those well, what what's kind of the date what's the date from this david do you know when when was know. this mission flown why would it uh, not burn up in the atmosphere i have so many questions supposedly yeah <laughs> no and they use real footage average. that's that for sure Absolutely. i am not saying that they create this in digital and that no no that is that but they they use miniature all the time they use from the 60 uh 69 when they fake the moon landing they they use a lot of techniques I am not saying that this is the case, uh, but uh, you know, it's it's so 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 strange how they uh, screw up all the time. I mean, they could do better if they want. I I don't know what's going on in the NASA studios, but they they are you know really crap. Uh, CG artists. It should be no <laughs> shock that they are the number one users of helium. 
right? And I yeah. think, and I'd be able to find this article. It's in my, you know, my OneNote somewhere. But the second highest user of helium is the DoD. So NASA is number one. Department of Defense is number two mm-hmm. in using helium. And why would that be? Yeah. They have uh, their own launching program as well. It's known that uh, I saw another a person being interviewed talking about the different launching um, processes that they do. And the DOD at, has its own program that does its own launches. Right. Exactly. I think that they uh, Delta Four and Atlas, mm-hmm. those ones are all DOD. So, yeah, it's just crazy because they, they now they are coming back and saying that the world supply of helium is disappearing. So I don't know if they're going to use it until they're out or what. Yeah. And how, how do they get it? Do you know? Anybody knows how they get it? How they get what? I believe it comes from rocks. Helium. Hey. Um, oh, the helium. I have no yeah. idea. It, and it, then once it's gone from the ground, I don't think they can, according well, to what I've seen, they can get it. Is the helium shortage a real thing? I mean, who knows? They're, they're who knows in charge of all of this. There, there might be so much helium that it's ridiculous that it should. They could be, be harvesting it from the dome. You know, once it goes up yeah. there, you know, helium you would know. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And, and the and the reason they want to make it short, uh, it's kind of like fossil fuels, so they can keep the price high, so people can't send up balloons and can't do stuff that's going to expose uh, this global eye. Yeah, I, th- I think also, guys, there was a. Uh, uh, a, a big old huge party supply store right side, right outside of NASA. That's probably where they get it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and the other thing is they 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 frauded us with the Zeppelin. You know, hydrogen. You know how right. dangerous it is. So they've made it so. Oh no, that's hydrogen. Hydrogen bomb. You know, the Zeppelin worst thing ever, yeah. Uh, yeah. which was a deception. And now helium. There's a shortage. It's too expensive. Therefore, we can't have airships that would expose. Uh, the flat, non-rotating plane that we live on. Yeah, well, imagine I imagine that. And if helium gets up high enough, though, and it does do what you know, Eru's talked about before, when it gets to that very low temperature and could possibly become a solid, then it might be possible that they can't get it back. Yeah, if it, if it goes, if it goes up, and yeah, it becomes a superfluid, and it's just too high for them to get to. So, so it is possible that they are running low. We all don't know what how they get helium no. if there's a shortage, but the elite are saying there's a shortage. Therefore, we can assume there is no shortage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If they say right? it's I mean, true, then it obviously form, isn't. We have to take an uninformed <laughs> default position. We're going to go against what they're saying, what they're pushing, and they're pushing a helium shortage. I say there's no helium shortage, but we can look into it further. I, I've always thought it was very weird, exactly w- what you're saying, how the Hindenburg thing, they make such a big deal, it's so dangerous, but it seemed to have been, you know, just a step forward in the technology, and then this just disappears, and they have some sort of monopoly over this helium technology. It's really odd. We should be having things, gadgets that use helium on a day-to-day basis, and all we have is balloons for children, like I said, and to make funny voices. And and that 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 thing falling with that, asymmetrical pipe on the side of it it would be spinning and twisting and going all around but instead it's just floating yeah now i will say I did, one I thing did want, i'm sorry oh, go, go ahead i was ben. just going to point out that it, that there it does show up in another time on that video as well which um it's a uh, you, uh i wish david would put it in that video of yours but did you see that other part david where it shows up at, so the first time yeah, it was it was a little harder to see, and I, I was just trying to keep the video but it, short. It keeps up with it, like it turns and then keeps up with it. Well, anyway, I, oh, I just I didn't find notice it, that. it's very fascinating as well. I don't I don't know if you can somehow show that, but it's at uh, at that three thirty three mark on that on that link that was originally on your on your channel. But um, oh, anyway, the, the other thought I had was maybe that it's not cloaking technology. Maybe it's just uh, them uh, photoshopping it later. As, as a possibility, and for all we know, it could be the space shuttle itself being photoshopped out. Um, but the, the other... Whoops, sorry. <laughs> the other question I had is all that Are debris departing? that's flying by, there's so much debris that's flying by it at the same time that's also white in color. Yeah. I'm just, I just don't understand what that is either. I was just there's curious if paper. anyone else had an opinion on that. There's a paper they showed, uh, David, I think you showed it before. Uh, right, paper that it, just, it, it repeats through the whole video. There's uh, flying right. by it all the time, which is also really weird. I, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> what the hell? Very strange, is it so. is it a paper or is it another? 
There, or is it I don't an artifact what, I don't from know the... what that one is. Now watch how that how that turns around and uh, uh, keeps up with it. All right, that's right. What the hell? Interesting. So maybe it's hanging from that. Who knows? I mean, it <laughs> yeah. could be on a tether, like the astronauts. Yeah, <laughs> pretty crazy. So anyway, but to, to answer your question, uh, Jaren, about why it wouldn't burn up. I mean, obviously, if it's a balloon, the, the answer is obvious why it's not <laughs> burning up. But if, assuming it was actually falling um, from the elevation that they, they said that it would be, um, it would not be coming in from a, a supposedly accelerated 17,500 mile an hour, uh, you know, speed. So essentially, it would be dropping down and it may get to seven or 800 miles going down. And, um, you know, it may get a little warm from the friction, but again, remember at that altitude, anything above like a hundred thousand feet, you know, 75 to a hundred thousand feet, there isn't a whole lot of altitude, uh, a whole lot of air up there, you know, to mm -hmm. cause any friction. So, you know, that's why another reason why I think that's nonsense. Of course, if you, even if you look at the things that supposedly were coming in at that, you know, 17, five plus speed, um, like Apollo modules or anything like that, that actually splashes down. Um, and Potter's clay caught this a long time ago. It's interesting, but you would it, supposedly it heats to well over 3,000 degrees. And if that was true, then it would cause a whole lot of steam coming off the ocean when it hit the ocean. And of course, it doesn't. So again, they just dropped it out of a KC-135 or something like that. Yeah, and, and remember, can, can I share this, my screen one more sure. time? Sure, you betcha. Okay. <laughs> and this thing hits the water at full speed you know, no parachute and doesn't explode or get smashed. It's, it's should not, cause a tsunami. Sh should shatter into <laughs> bits. Yeah, it's hot, hitting the cold ocean like concrete it, at, you know, however fast it's going. And yep. uh, I, I, I am presenting. Suppose. Okay, yep. you are presenting. Because, you know, I don't know if the, exact, the, sa the same video, but... Uh, when I see that tank, uh, reminds me this uh, space launch that supposedly reached the, you know, the barrier of 120 kilometers, and they, of course, they use um, fisheye lens and still that you, you can see how when the self, uh, uh, you know, equilibrate, uh, uh, it's presented at a flat line. But supposedly that is that kind of uh, rocket because. This is the deployment of the, uh, the of the rocket that that they uh, let me just here is supposedly when the the space shuttle release you know and then you they release this supposedly tank and that is the tank that supposedly is orbiting like you show in the video but the problem here is that this is the altitude 133 uh, thousand feet. All right. So at that altitude, you must be falling down to the earth. Like, you know, normal things do, uh, you are not going to be floating in this supposedly panacea effect. Like, uh, oh, we are in the space in the 2001 space odyssey floating with uh, classical music in the background. You must be falling down as a rock, like this rocket, you know, you are not going to be floating like that. That is the strange thing. I mean, that uh, tank, uh, that uh, floating tank, is not reach the supposedly out of, uh, you know, out of uh, of the air to be floating like, uh, uh, you know, a, a regular spaceship. You must be falling down super quickly, like the go fast thing mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. they shoot, they show when they uh, they. Um, like this, I, I trying mm -hmm. to say sorry for my uh, improvisation. And they go into the super fluid there. Yeah, yeah, for example, right now when they they reach 120 kilometers, they take off the 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 primary stage, and that that thing start falling down, you know. And when the camera keep going, and this is not the full video, but when you start uh, looking at, uh, you're gonna see again more small more, you know, uh, falling to the ground. And that is supposedly what is must be happened with the uh, tank that David uh, compared with the blimp balloon. So 
why is there still like you know presenting this orbital behavior if the altitude and the speed of that uh, tank is not allowed to be floating like it's out of uh, you know the the gravity the, the 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 gravitational pull of the earth at that altitude you have like the same thing of the gravitational pull that is on the ground almost <laughs> yeah interesting so, you know what i mean uh, yeah you can just see it's still, dropping it's away it should, yeah it yeah. should not be it should not be getting further away from the the primary stage i mean they should be if anything in sync with each other exactly you know yeah. that that supposedly primary uh boost uh, booster is falling to the ground on the ocean and why the tank is not doing that if, if the tank is not self propelled um self thruster or self propulsion um pro, pro, you know, propelled. i don't know propel itself nothing it's just a piece of supposedly metal that is must be falling down to the earth so uh, yep. i don't know how uh, why they supposedly still still up there you know floating and it's, so like, it's also so slow as it rotates right that's what david was, uh, was pointing to if because yeah. it, it's going so fast it would be getting air resistance it would start spinning and and you know it just moves like a balloon yeah i'm stop sharing i just want to to share that okay my opinion cool. so uh, let me ask if iru if uh if i'm mistaken iru what have you seen about that shuttle tank Do, doesn't that big orange tank never make it back to earth or am i confused no sup uh, i i i don't uh, i don't I, know i know if, uh, i i have videos that supposedly is recover the 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 orange tank but i don't know if that particular that no. one it, particular it, it, it gets recovered, but I don't think it gets reused. And um, some guy sent me a letter saying that his father was a tugboat captain who went to grab the barge that had the tank on it. And he said uh, when he arrived, the tank was already on the barge in, in perfect, pristine shape. And he always thought that was weird. And he w wonders how they got it on the barge. But he's just <laughs> a tugboat captain that's brought in to tug this and therefore... Uh, space shuttle's real because my dad's tugboat captain, but he always thought that was weird. So that's it's weird, another. I remember, I'm, yeah, I remember reading things a while ago, and I'll have to look to find out exactly where. But I know that there's no parachutes used on it, right? But I thought that the reason for that is because they say it breaks up before landing in the ocean. Nope. You sure about that? All right. Um, let me. Ch I, 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 I'm. I'm. I'm sharing my screen one more time. Um, Right okay. now, I don't know if you are presenting, but no, because this yep, is the official are. video from this is official video from NASA, and supposedly this is what happened. I mean, you have a flat Earth in the background, and then <laughs> you have this, uh, you know, uh, first of all, h how you have fire uh, in that altitude that in the know, atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the first thing that I start thinking about. Yeah. Men. Oh wait, wait, and Ira, before you go any further on that, I want to point something out. This right okay. here, there at the at the apex of the triangle is held on to the shuttle yes. with one bolt <laughs> one yes. freaking bolt get out yes. of town <laughs> <laughs> of plane and, and, and look at that little I mean, yeah. well, bob it's like two inches in diameter come on, come on look, look at that look at that Ooh, nice yeah man i mean it's <laughs> like a 22 Lock uh, 22, lifting yeah. 4.5 uh, million yeah, you, pounds. It's, it's unobtainium. You know, like video, I think it was, uh, <laughs> why do, why do, I forget who did it, Um, about the that bolt. And then he showed like trailer bolts that pulled like boat trailers and stuff on how bent they get and how they break. Mm -hmm. Just from tug, you know, from a tractor trailer pulling you know, a large load or, or something. Insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know what? I mean, First of all, if you see the mechanism, it's like this tiny bolt is just like a whoop going down, you know, like, you know, like, whoop, ah, okay, I released. <laughs> That's the so plate. absurd. There is and, no and, way and, that and that could absorb those stresses. From, no, there's just remember, no way. And, and remember that the space shuttle, when they launch from the ground, it's been at, uh, on its axis and, and, and pointing down to the ground until reach the space. I mean... Supposedly, when it's taking off from the ground at the beginning, it's rotating, and this 
craft is pointing down to the ground. So it's only held by mm. this supposedly mechanism. The compass. Right. Here's I the mean, challenge for NASA. Looks, looks, looks a lot look, like Forget the, uh, the incredible thrust. Forget the incredible thrust of a takeoff. Show us that mechanism hooked to 4.5 million pounds and gently lifted off the ground, letting those two supports be the only thing that holds it. Show us the material that can do that. And you don't even have to accelerate. Just gently lift it like you're trying not to break it. Exactly. <laughs> well, please, you know, because uh, this is what, I, what I'm talking about. I mean, they, they make the launch and... You know, now the, the most stress and heavy part is pointing down to the ground right. and supposedly is held by that tiny screw on, on the top. Which makes no sense at all. Not a screw, it's a bolt. A bolt, <laughs> sorry, man, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for, for correcting me. Okay, so then you have this and here is when it's released, you know, simply as that. And then this tank it's not in the orbital path of a the spherical Earth. This is just 100 kilometers up there and must be falling down at a, a certain speed. It no, why, why where, is, is the, where does the fuel come out and go into the rockets? Where's uh, the connection for the fuel? I don't know. <laughs> I think it, I think it's those, those those bottom things they supposedly say. You know, we can see them in this image here. The bottom little two sticks go into the solid rockets, which do yes. come back to Earth. But my my understanding was that the orange tank never comes back. So I'm way off. If that's I thought it not falls, in well, the, but it could water. be. But I mean, at that altitude, you must be come down. Correct. Technically speaking, you know, in 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 their own model. You must be get back to the Earth, right? But yeah, I'm just I'm baffled that with the amount amount of times that the shuttle is supposedly taken off, which is 130 something, or I don't know more than that, that there's no video of either a the external tank coming down in the ocean or b the external tank burning up because it's not very high. It, it, it's being detached at I'm gonna, I'm going to guess 40 to 60 miles, and, and again I'm going on this based on what they tell me, not what I think. But what they say is that it's being detached at 60 miles high. And I always thought that it was that it burned up in the atmosphere on the way back. But maybe I'm wrong. Because I never understood uh, that. I never well, understood. We could see it's not burning up. No, <laughs> it's clearly not. And that's no, what I'm no, saying no. is it's not going to gain speed at that point enough to burn up, I wouldn't think. I just, but I, just, I was looking this. for a picture of it in the ocean. Uh, right. Bob, could you share this picture? I just put it in the chat. It's coming over right now. Um, look at this picture. It's falling over the land. They showed a picture of land. <laughs> so here. where does this here. land? I have the picture uh, here. I, I'm still presenting my, my screen, Bob. Oh, you yes, go. you are. Thank you. you want to do oh, it? Okay. okay. This, is, this is a picture that uh, David sent us. I, okay. I mean, that tells you right there. You know, you got a, a 58... Thousand pound or whatever that yeah fifty eight thousand pounds empty uh, landing on a farmhouse. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I think if you ask NASA fans, they would tell you that that orange tank never makes it back to Earth. I'm just telling you what they would say. So it's going to burn up before it hits the ground that we can <laughs> already see, and Correct. there's no flames coming off of it. So Correct. There's just right. a point where it goes poof, kind of like the building the the plane that hit the Pentagon. Poof. <laughs> Vaporizes. Yeah, just, exactly. Just vaporizes. Uh, yeah, an extremely rigid body structure, which uh, yeah, somehow burns up in the atmosphere. But you're able to see it first. I, I don't get any of it. No, yeah. no, me too. I mean, they must be falling so down it to the sun, they, you know? they they ship this thing on barges, on trucks, all around the world for people to see it. Oh yeah, they love that journey to Cape Canaveral. So again, I saw the blimp. I saw, I mean, I saw the external ch tank on a barge. Therefore, the shuttle program is real. Sounds Correct. like Mike Adams, don't I? They're very good at that. They're very it's, good at making sure people see that. And, you know, everything that ever was, you know, it's like when we see gravity waves in the, in the clouds. Well, then <laughs> gravity waves must be real. That's how people look at the news. And why would the news be lying about that? <laughs> It's so absurd. Gravity <laughs> waves in the clouds. Has it always had this design like this with this with this compass holding the whole thing? Like it's always been like this, this triangle thing? That doesn't make any engineering always. sense. 
No, it looks absolutely it, haphazard. It's 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 not even mounted to the the fuselage good. It's it's kind of just angled in there and looks like they used a couple of nails and hammered it in. This is crazy how poorly that's constructed. It almost looks like the lunar lander type of you know <laughs> the, technology. Yeah, hangers, uh, <laughs> aluminum foil the, hangers. The piping, the piping on the outside is what gets me. It, it literally looks like PVC pipe, and it's going. You know the the SR seventy one goes Mach 3.2 or whatever and it heats up to 500 degrees and expands. This thing is going 22 times to the speed of sound. <laughs> and it's got yeah. all of these protuberances on it and it's not, it's, it's a garbage can. It's not a, a dart. Um, it's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah. Sure is. Yeah, yeah complete. I mean, <laughs> they, they use the same equipment for hanging on the, the space shuttle as, as they use for hanging on uh, just a regular missile, which is not even the 10% of the weight that supposedly this the spaceship is going to have. Hmm. So it's, it's like, uh, right. I, I can accept that you use that kind of uh, bolt to hanging on, you know, a missile that is really tiny and, and, and lighter. But for having that kind of a super space uh, craft with all the people that supposedly go into the space, attaching to that three bolts, <laughs> I mean, that, that is uh, yeah, insane. So but. What, I'm, what I'm reading here is what I was saying, that it says the ET was jettisoned just after 10 seconds after main engine cutoff where the SMMEs were shut down and then re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, unlike the solid rocket boosters, which are the two boosters on the side. External tanks were not reused. They broke up before impact in the Indian Ocean or Pacific Ocean in the case of direct insertion launch trajectories, and they were made sure to blow up away from shipping lanes and were not ever recovered. <laughs> it, it, except up, by the stealth the airplane. <laughs> whoever's, showing, uh, whoever's sharing, pull up the picture I just put in chat. I have a question. <laughs> that one's classic. <laughs> so let me ask you a question this. The, pull, there's a picture. Um, no, no, not that one. The next one. I put another picture in chat. Ah, another picture. Okay, sorry, David. Well, uh, I don't see another picture in chat. You no, mean I'm this not one? Seeing. No. Wait, what? The last one you sent was the little orange no, okay. tank over the ground. Do your homework, it. man. It's there. What? Um, I, I don't see it. Do I see it. <clears throat> you see it? Why don't I see it? Uh, nope. No, last no, thing I, I see, just... David, is uh, this this thing right here at two fifty. Hold on. Yeah, that's yeah, the orange tank. Yeah. That's the last thing. Try it again. And look that CGI from the eighties, man. That's I mean, real. That's real. It's, it's, that's again. real, man. No doubt. <laughs> you know. <laughs> look at that. Here, I'll put the link in. There okay. you go. Okay, I we got it. But now let me it? let me finish this rotation, man. Look at that miniature. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. No, that, so so funny. So okay, this thing is, is falling out of the sky and as you can see in this picture it is below the clouds now we know the clouds aren't that high the sun is above it who's taking that picture are they standing underneath it i mean is there a, a is there something free falling is it there a sky like the Hindenburg. <laughs> <laughs> they, they brought back the same cameraman from the apollo uh, 12 launch from the it's moon. just floating 100 or 11. feet above their heads and they're they're it's probably on some line and it's just a photo so I, mean, I don't understand. If that's supposed to burn up in the atmosphere, why is there no video of that happening? Ever, I, don't, ever. I don't believe it burns up in the atmosphere. Or I, don't, I don't think that's the official story, but but it's there below the clouds. It hasn't started heating up yet. Who's taking that picture? <laughs> and, 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 and I don't know, but uh, talking about the fire so in the atmosphere, why it's going to be burned if there is no oxygen at that altitude, <laughs> first of all? I mean, why is going to produce this supposedly fire in the atmosphere that that you you don't have oxygen up there? You know, you don't I mean? even have an you don't even have an atmosphere really for it to be rubbing against. Ex exactly. <laughs> <laughs> why is going to produce this? I mean, that is fantasy story, you know. Yeah, it's yeah this thing crazy. doesn't even look like it's going fast enough to be having that kind of friction because. You know, we know from things that actually accelerate, they don't get to be much uh, higher than the speed of sound. Not so many times, maybe three or four times, but this is 17 times supposed to be. I mean, uh, it, it would vaporize. It's beyond. Yeah, it would it's vaporize. Beyond the, 
And Dave, I'm doing some yeah. some research as far as I can tell, but that is what it says. The orange external tank is jettisoned 10 seconds after Miko and falls back to Earth, but it is not reused. It doesn't have any parachutes, and it is designed to break apart before landing in the ocean out of the way of any ships. Yeah. Break wow. apart. Wow. Bullshit. Break apart like a balloon. To, yeah, to like disappear exactly. <laughs> directly. It's, it's preferred to, this message is going to self-destruct in 10 seconds. A helicopter <laughs> driving by with a BB gun, and they just hit it, and, it, and <laughs> boom, it breaks up. Right. <laughs> just like this one. <laughs> That's new NASA's new song. Up, up, and away. In uh, a I should have used that. I should have used that. In my video. I almost <laughs> named this that that, that <laughs> after that song. This episode. That would have been a good song for my video. You should have. You should have. You think yeah, pretty sad. Okay, let me uh, cut back happened. over to the right. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> all right, let me go ahead and kick back over. Um, all right, so what do you guys think are going to – the ballers, I mean, I'm, I'm just waiting for the response. I'm going to guess that the ballers are going to say, oh, you idiots, that's just another cloud. Um, what do you guys think they're going to say? No, it's, a, it's something no. that's uh, – the, the stealth some... airplane. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, some kind of debris that the space shuttle leaves when they, you know, um, break ice apart chip. from the from the tank, you right. know, something like that. No, no it's frozen, just debris, frozen yeah. hydrogen chunks. For example, they can use whatever <laughs> that they falls want. at the same rate as a fifty-eight thousand pound metal <laughs> tank. Yeah, terminal and velocity is, yeah. and is flat and appears to be aerodynamic. It. <laughs> it's frame frame of reference. They're gonna say for sure. Oh, of course. Maybe UFOs. Yeah. Frame of reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we're having too much fun at NASA's expense here. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, okay. Well, anyway. Um, no, I brilliant. need to reshare the screen, man. Oh, you do? I need to reshare the screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go no, for because it. I was watching this uh, document, uh, documentary from the Space Shuttle. Um, and... Uh, it's really funny because, of course, this is not silver tape. No, it's some kind of metal thing maybe attached to the tank. I, I'm not saying that. But mm. look this part when they show, you know, just this part of this spacecraft. But on the top, you are seeing, you know, regular sky. But if I, <laughs> if I, if I, you know, take out this from the, this, the, this part to the bottom and only show you, yeah, this proof. moving is you know you have the the space on the on the the spacecraft in the space you know just as simply as that it's that easy yeah it's that easy man i mean you know sorry i don't want to lose your time but <laughs> i i mean, i just you know sharing that part yeah no worries okay all right yeah. so now, now i am stopped forever okay now you stop forever forever, <laughs> well, not forever. no not for, 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 for the day for the day Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Depends where the topic goes. <laughs> okay. All right. So brilliant, brilliant uh, find, David, um, Teddy, um, everybody that, that found this stuff. Um, absolutely amazing. And, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting to see what the Globers are going to say um, about, you know, in their rebuttal. But actually, well, I, re I really no don't give a what. shit either. <laughs> right. I don't think they're going to address it because if they don't address it, it doesn't exist. Just goes yeah. away. Yep. So, okay. Um, let's move on. We're actually, you know, we should probably start wrapping it up here, but because uh, we spent a lot more time on that than I had planned, but that's okay. I don't care. It's it's good. I do want to share a couple of other good things um, for you. Somebody sent me this to me this week. Uh, MIT deepfake shows Nixon sadly saying the moon astronauts died. And sure enough, he actually does say that. So in the event that Apollo 11, the NASA mission that sent Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Buzz Aldrin to the surface of the moon failed, President Nixon had a speech written and ready to go. Um, because the mission succeeded, Nixon never delivered the speech, but MIT engineers used deepfake technology to create a news broadcast in which digitally reconstructed Nixon um, delivers the bad news, um, blah, blah, blah. The deep fake, which will be presented at a film festival Friday, illustrates just how easy it is to make viral, or virtual, excuse me, puppets deliver convincing speeches, even if they, they're totally removed from history. So let's give it a listen. This 
Good evening, my fellow Americans. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. Wow. And there's a little more. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come, will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. Good night. <laughs> the way he shakes his head. Uh, my yeah, fellow yeah, some, some protocol thing <laughs> that supposedly the astronauts uh, get really die. Yeah, pretty crazy. Oh. Okay, and the last thing I'll cover, um, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, physicist questions gravity's existence. Okay, now obviously we have had our discussions on this panel about uh, whether or not gravity exists, um, what it is, etc. Um, not everybody obviously is on the same page, but I, I have to laugh at this regardless um, because even the mainstream, uh, even the mainstream science doesn't seem to, you know, have any singular consensus on opinion. You know, whether it's Einsteinian, Newtonian, uh, uh, you know, whether it's magnetic or whatever it is. So this new one is really over the freaking top. <laughs> um, and let me see if I can actually find the part where he's talking about it, um, what he says. Oh, okay. Instead, Verlin posits that gravity results from objects that had been stretched apart from one another and are just relaxing more into a comfortable position. In other words, he's comparing it to kind of like it's a it's a rubber band, right? That's what gravity is, is a rubber band. And and because he is uh, Eric Verlind, you know, mainstream science is giving him all this consideration, you know, like he's Einstein or something. But um, I just thought that was hilarious because it's like, are you kidding me? Uh, that it's just relaxing back into its normal positions, and that's what's causing gravity. Ay, caramba. Um, it's really pathetic, you know, where they're going with this. It kind of reminds me of the the uh, Sunday Mass uh, program that we did. And you guys remember how about uh, all the different physicists' positions on what mass was, what it wasn't, whether or not, you know, inertial mass uh, would change things, uh, whether or not the mass was controlled by the uh, motion of the quarks and gluons, etc. Nobody could ever agree on anything. Um, and then some people said that mass was energy and energy was mass. And if so, then why are the equations, you know, separating them and differentiating them? It's absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, all I can say is whatever gravity is, I mean, things seem to go down, right? Seems Things seem to drop, whether you want to believe it's it's buoyancy whether you believe like I do and that it has uh, an electrical component to it or whatever, um, it's just comical, you know, to me that physicists are so lost in it themselves that they would actually consider something as preposterous as a rubber band analogy for gravity. So any comments on that? <laughs> okay. nope. We All know right. how everything goes, right, for them. It's so it's just another another element another kind of twist into the pile of twisted stuff that they <laughs> produce. You know, nothing goes. We know it goes just a whole double think mentality, right? It's incredible. Yeah, it I really is because literally anything goes. Like, we, and we've seen this more and more, and it seems to be accelerating. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're just out of control. And then they come up with other things like you know, this new Grace system, and Ben sent this to me this uh, this week. And I'll probably cover this next week because this is this is comedy, actually. This is so damn funny. You know, the things that they assert and how they say this works, um, I really need to give it a little more time. But, uh, yeah, this is good. And then I was also going to cover Einstein and the ether. But, alas, we have run out of time today, so um, we will cover this next week perhaps. But... Uh, yeah, great presentation today, I think, you know, and great find on that, David. And, uh, you know, and also, guys, I will remind you that if you are, like I said, a content creator, get your stuff backed up. Um, I personally am going to back up every single video on this channel because, you know, the more I go through a lot of this stuff, uh, Robert Bassano really did cover a lot of stuff. Now, a lot of people may know that 
Robert Bassano and I have uh, had our scrapes in the past, but um, you know, I am happy to say that we have kind of gotten through those and resolved it, and uh, so everything is okay between he and I now. But uh, I will say that um, Robert did some really, really great research, and uh, he, I think he's best known for uh, his phone calls to NASA and just getting those clowns to admit things that, frankly, were unbelievable. Um, and that's really kind of his biggest thing. But um, his motto was, uh, uh, you know, it's not what you can, oh, what is that? It's not you can do something, it's what you can prove. It's not, yeah, it, exactly. It's not what you know, it's what yeah, you Yeah, can that's do. it. Yeah, that's right. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And, and I like that motto, and that's really good. That's kind of what he operated from. And so, you know, hats off to Robert Pisano. And, uh, you know, thank you for a lot of great content. Uh, hopefully, maybe one of these days, he'll actually come back and start making some more content. That would be great. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, I'm personally going to archive all the stuff on Planete Veritas, and I would suggest everybody else does too. And if you have, uh, you know, content that you really favor from other great content providers, you know, give them a backup as well. Uh, we have a guy, Alex, that is has dedicated hundreds of terabytes um, to doing just this, and he is archiving virtually everything. So I think that, uh, you know, just to be on the safe side, uh, people get your stuff backed up, and uh, let's, you know, let's preserve this work because it would be a shame to see it all go away. So, all right. So, hey, hey Bob, have you ever showed... Um the site fecore.st no you might want i'm to not just, even you might want to just bring it up i think i sent it to you but i know we, we go through a million things just type in fecore.st and I, i'm pretty sure that he hosts these on his own site i don't think now click uh click globusters the logo there oh yeah i do remember this and so they're all this archived is, yeah, this is every show. Now, I'm not sure if he if these are actually hosted on his own site or if they're hosted on YouTube. Obviously, if they're obviously if they're hosted on YouTube, then that's a problem in the fact that if the YouTube channel went away and you clicked one of those links, that. Uh, but I don't know if the if the link is mm -mm, no. These see, it are looks not, like it's on his own server, right? It is. These are yeah. These are individual. These are MP4s. Beautiful. So it's, is this Alex's yeah. site or is this somebody else? God, I have his name somewhere in my notes. I think. Um, he showed it to me in Amsterdam and I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but, okay, uh, it probably wasn't Alex. There's a couple other, either. no. And then if you click back and you can just see there's one for deep inside the rabbit hole, there's one for Rodrigo now, Rodrigo, did you know this existed? No, this is incredible. This is, yeah, this see, is amazing. Right there next to, uh, your logo. And then there's Paul on the plane, Jay Tolan media, Rob Skiba's stuff. So, and it looks like anytime we post something that it, it goes here. So it's just a good spot for people to remember that's there. And uh, I appreciate and thank whoever it was that showed me this. I talked to so many people in Amsterdam that I forgot who exactly it was. Part of me thinks his name was David, but maybe I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, anyway, I think I'll, I'll look back and find out his name and we'll holler it, it out. Is our time. stuff actually hosted there or just mirrored? Is it just no, like, it's hosted? It's hosted. It's hosted there. Yeah. Right. There's, there's all your stuff. Um. Well, not all your click, stuff, click, obviously. Click, click one of those links. If you click it, it just plays from oh. there. See. All right. Yeah. So they they actually have it there. Yeah. These are not rerouting to YouTube. They're, they're actually stored on site, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So now, it's now we probably just st. I know. ST. <laughs> yep. I now we just prompted a, a, a denial of service attack on it. I'm sure. Of course. Of course. Yep. So, oh, and you know, before I forget, let me handle the super chats um, because obviously that's awesome. Oh, come on. Oopsie. Well, is it going to come up? I'm sitting here looking at, uh, <laughs> they all seem to have gone away. Unbelievable. So I'm using the new uh, YouTube studio. And oh, they don't stay on there? I didn't know if they did or didn't. Well, they, yeah, they did. Like it was showing all of them. It was showing all of them, and no, now but they're you, all you have like you, you have like a special, uh, you have like three, I don't know which is the name in English, but you have like a main thing, and then you have like a secondary, and uh, there are three buttons, uh, you know, on, on, on the screen, and you have this special place for the super chats. Um, sorry yeah, for my <laughs> for my description was terrible, man. Sorry. That's okay. So I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll just show it, you guys. There. Yeah. So okay. you have got viewer activity, stream health, 
and all that stuff. Oh, okay, and yeah, but it's uh, a minute ago they were all there. Uh, yeah, usually if you go to viewer activity, it wow. should be there, but exactly uh, they disappeared. Well, so I, th I thought they stayed there forever. One. So did I. Yeah, it was uh, there was fifty uh, fifty dollars from Hendrik. All 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 sorts. Uh, the well, same guy that. Yeah, there were several yeah. of them. There were like 10 or 11 of them at least. And guys, I'm sorry. I was uh -huh, going to no, shout sorry. you all out. Um, but for whatever reason, YouTube just made them all disappear. But uh, those of you that donated, thank you. You know who you are. And I'm sure everybody saw. Um, and thank you again so much for that. It is greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm just very grateful. But uh, again, Amazing. YouTube has screwed me. So those very guys. Very strange. Yep. Now, Bob, did you do the uh, this version because it wouldn't let you do a live event anymore? No, I just or, did it because no, I figured I better get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, that's what I've done. I did that already in the past, but it, it still does let me do live events. Yeah, and it also does not have a lot of the features that the old did. Um, you know, about setting, or at least I couldn't find it about setting in the um, you know chat delay, um, you know slow mode, etc. When it when oh, you, you wanted it to be premiered. I mean, it's it still sucks, um, so I'm not <laughs> thrilled with it. But I do kind of like being able to watch the the um, you know the chat from here because usually that's I have nice. another window open that's that's doing that. But right. uh, anyway, all right. So okay, guys. So I guess we will go around one more time and uh, let everybody uh, say what's going on, and then we will get out of here. So David, since you are the guest of honor today, sir, we will start with you. What's what's going on? Um, nothing. I had a nice long weekend, so back to work tomorrow. So you won't be seeing uh, much from me until the weekend. Um, but the, if you just Google uh, uh, space shuttle external tank uh, recoveries, there's so many videos and there's so much wrong with every one of them. And then they all just cut off before it goes, hits the ground. I mean, they're not burning up. They're floating. It, it's... It's so ridiculous. I don't know how people didn't see it before now. Yeah. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> but, you know, and that also kind of reminds me of uh, a couple of years ago, we covered this thing about the right around the time NASA was formed and they started run, launching rockets, the Bermuda Triangle all of a sudden came into existence and planes and ships and boats and trains were disappearing in the Bermuda Triangle. And, you know, we kind of posited the idea that, uh, they're just trying to keep people out of that section of the ocean. And if they're not, then if something just happened to happen to them or they disappeared, well, they could blame it on the Bermuda Triangle. Conversely, they also had something on the other side of the world for Japan, you know, where they're launching rockets over there. What a coincidence. So just, just you know, they always got a story. They always have a story. So Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So, Rodrigo, we'll spin it around to you. You got anything coming up that's uh, going to be fun this week? Well, I'm um, trying to finish a bunch of work, getting things done. Um, hopefully, um, well, I've been on the Brazilian with some of the Brazilian people. That's That's been quite interesting, getting through some of my presentations in the past, and they want to see some material from some of our friends. So see what happens. I, I just had so, put so many things uh, on a list uh, to, to do that, you know, I, I only want to have to do one at a time. So that's what I'm trying to do keep track of stuff and keep going so and we'll see if uh friday uh, we'll talk uh, with jaren again that would be nice if, uh, if that's going to happen i'm not sure but absolutely yeah yeah so right, looking forward to it. excellent mm -hmm. so i take your back and fe core fe core has oh. been quite interesting too sorry sorry bob just oh, just to, okay. to mention, mention the one thing that we've uh we've been uh looking into together a little bit with fe core that there's there's some interesting stuff going on. I, I'm I'm happy that to to see how it works. You know what I'm saying? Not sure I can talk much about it, but just to see that, that there's a group of people who are really intent on the information on producing uh, research that that's valuable and and who are very serious about what they're doing. I'm, I'm quite impressed with with the team there. So are, are we talking about the uh, gyro compass? Is that what you're referring to? <clears throat> No, I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking about, well, that, if you want to talk about that, but also just the way FE Core is, you know, oh, from yeah. the inside, the, the way the, the interactions, you know, the people, Robert, you, Karen, uh, Mike, you know, and, and how that has been so 
um, it's refreshing. Yeah. You can say. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that at, at some point for sure. But uh, yeah, as far as uh, the Gyro Compass guys, I, I will say that uh, Epicor has bought, has purchased a Gyro Compass. And um, we are currently studying it and trying to figure out exactly how it does work. Um, I will say this, none of us believe for one second that it is because of Earth rotation that it finds north. And in fact, we are let's just say actively in the process of disproving that. And that's all the further I'm going to go with that until we actually release something. But they are an interesting device to say the least, very expensive, um, very intricate, very, very cool. I mean, you know, so it's going to make its rounds. And so that's kind of one of the things that we're playing with and right now in FE core. So there you have it. All right. So let's move around to Ben. Um, ben, what do you have coming up this week? Or, or whenever. <laughs> well, I hope we can continue on the uh, Globusters Pro. So any of the professionals out there that would like to, to talk about that, uh, please email us at uh, globusterspro at Um uh, We'd like to talk with you, but I hope we can do a program on, on with the several sonar technicians all talking about that because I think that would be fantastic for Globusters. So I hope that will be happening. But I have, you know, another four videos I'm working on right now. So... That's what I'm doing. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's hey, we, Bob. I forgot one thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have been asking how to gift the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac clock app. Um, and I have instructions on the Flat Earth podcast page um, how to do it on iOS. You can do it straight through the App Store. But for Google Play, um, I'm offering a uh, discounted price where you can buy any number that you want. Um, they it goes like $2 less than $2 if you buy like 10 or more or whatever. Um, and I will actually send you electronic gift cards. Uh, it's a nice little layout. It has a code number and you can email those to people, to family and friends, your mother, your father, your sister, your cousin, uh, your boss, whoever, um, where they can get a free Android copy um, as a gift. So check that out. It's all the, the posts are on the Flat Earth Podcast Facebook page. Awesome. All right. Yeah, that's really nice, David, that you do that. That's very cool. Just another way to get people out there flat smacking because your app is awesome. And I think that, uh, you know, as time goes along, we're probably going to be needing to rely on it more and more to distribute information to other flat earthers. So, guys, if you have not, everybody has a phone. We know that. And if you have not gotten the app, um, by all means, get it. There's always a wealth of information on it. It's just fun to play with. It's really pretty cool. So, um by all means, go out there and grab it, guys. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. You're very welcome. Okay. So, yeah, Ben, I agree with you. I, I really want to have uh, some of the sonar techs on, uh, at least do more of a pro series with them. Uh, James was very gracious. He was very, uh, he was very cautious that, you know, he didn't, you know, violate any of his security um, clearance, you know, vows that he had to take. And, of course, we don't want him to do that either. But, uh um, it, it's just really cool that people like that are stepping forward and saying, hey, you know, this is kind of how it works, and it really wouldn't work on a flat Earth. And uh, the more professionals that we have coming forward to say stuff like that, uh, U.S. Navy techs, whatever, um, this is exactly what we need to hear from because this is how we're going to keep propagating this this message. So, I, again, uh, well, well, you know. And, he, and think about it. Just the, he came out and immediately four others come out. So it's it just, it starts a, 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 a the ball rolling. And I, exactly. I would love to see that really get rolling. <laughs> yeah, me too. For sure. So beautiful. All right. So, all right. So let's move along to Iru then. Uh, Iru, I will put your English channel up here the, the you lent, uh, that you just sent me. And there it is, the NPT okay. red pill. And what you got coming yeah. up, sir? Okay, C can I share my screen one more time? <laughs> very well, quickly, very quickly. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay, very quickly. Well, this is my new uh, English channel, so I invite everyone to subscribe. I'm going to be posting uh, videos at least one a week. That is my, my plan. Then with our kind of FA Core uh, group, uh, we start creating this... Um, a pendulum experiment that it's about detecting that supposedly I'm going to elaborate more in the 
in the future, but this is in a scale of uh, three centimeters uh, plus three centimeters. This is a, a concrete pendulum, and we have been, you know, hanging on 30 uh, metal rope uh, hanging on, and uh, supposedly it must be detected in the 24 period, um, 24 hour period. You must be that uh, has like 1.4 centimeters to um, both size. Uh, supposedly if the earth is rotating. We're going to present with all the math, uh, some physicists uh, talking about the experiment. Uh, we're going to have like, a, 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 I don't know which is the name in English to, you know, when you bring something from the lawyer background to certificate that, uh, you know, nothing happened that it should supposedly happen. Oh, okay. But Just to have it, it validated okay. and documented. Yeah, validated document. And going to, we, we're going to present like a, a short documentary, at least our results and what's going on. And supposedly we must be have the, this drift, uh, you know, between the night and the day in a 24-hour period with this uh, supposedly uh, pendulum that must be balanced uh, uh, at that numbers that I mentioned before. I, I am just speaking really quickly. Sorry for my... Uh, lack of English. And then the all the all um a few time ago I I, I was in contact with this uh, famous actor from Argentina that he also works in Hollywood. He became a flat earther, he became a friend of mine. We did together um this documentary uh, that is like a short um uh, it's like a short uh, interview series talking about the flat earth but uh, it, the images and all the you know, uh, technical stuff was edited by myself. So that was really important because we don't have this uh, kind of Netflix uh, situation where maybe the the producers, uh, they, they create this own, uh, you know, uh, image uh, or, or, or they, they are presenting their own, uh, you know, uh, evidence from the globe. No, we presented everything to the flat earth. So six months later, the, the um, Argentinian media, uh, they take it, they see, I don't know who, they see that document, uh, documentary, and they get crazy again. So we put again the flat earth uh, thing, um, in, in, look at the date. Uh, we have been, you know, <laughs> uh, getting crazy. The media here in Argentina, uh, based on the actor, but you know, Gast Gast uh, Gaston Paul explained why he opened to the no earthquake that was a bad, bad translated uh, to the uh, flat Earth. Uh, you know, uh, all the things. The, the the important thing here is that we are again in the headlines, and all the people start talking about the flat Earth. And nice. uh, I was invited. Yeah, I was invited uh, yesterday at night. Uh, the one, you know, most important TV uh, shows here in Argentina. We have only five minutes, but we talk about the long distance, um, the long uh, range distance object uh, that supposedly must be behind the curve. We're talking about Shea Suite, the composite image from the NASA and all the space agency, the water doesn't curve, you know, we leave all the, <laughs> in four minutes, we make like a super <laughs> short uh, flatter presentation, but what's really important is that, um, I, and I have all in, in, in Spanish, but we have all these uh, interviews in open television. And wow. a lot of these awesome. guys uh, are start supporting the flat earth instead of attacking the flat earth. So wow. we also have a few, uh, a few important journalists that critic, uh, you know, criticize the flat earth and talking about that, that is nonsense. But at least uh, we have a few that start to support in, in open television, the flat earth community. So that was, nice. uh, that, that was great. <laughs> and then the last thing, in my own TV, in my own radio show, I interview a candidate for president from Uruguay. And this guy is, start, is a really important guy in, in the politics of Uruguay. And he start talking about, in the interview, about all the Freemasons, the, the you know, Illuminati bloodlines, uh, the Club Bilderberg, the New World Order, everything, because he was even... Uh, um, put under uh, um, amenaza, which is the yeah. name? Uh, threatened. 
threatened. Yeah, by this organization. So wow, he, he yeah, and and it's in Spanish. It's a forty-seven minute interview, and it's in Spanish. But that guy starts to talking about everything that you suspect. Well, <laughs> that happened in real life, of course, as you may know. That so is that, incredible, uh, yeah. Eero, a presidential candidate. That I mean, yes, wow, big guy. time. Yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> man. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that was super awesome. It was a really nice interview. I, I put all the image, uh, you know, supporting what he's talking about. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, it will be great if uh, somebody can translate to English, maybe because you have a, you know, a real interview with the real people, the real politician talks about all these organizations behind the curtains. And, and you know, so I invite everyone to subscribe to my new uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if, if you can support me on Patreon, also you, you have the access there and the rest uh, is, is the same as always. All right. Beautiful. I've stopped sharing. All right. Well, congratulations on that era. That is, that is absolutely amazing. What do you think the odds are that this guy might actually be elected? Well, he was presented and he obtained a really poor quantity of votes uh, because the, uh, the, the, the presidential elections happened like two weeks ago. But, you know, that is what is going to happen. I mean, the, the media is complete control by uh, these organizations. But the, this guy is uh, really, because he's a lawyer from the 80s, so he's a very popular figure in, your, in, in his own country, which uh, is Uruguay. And, um, you know, we need to wait until the next uh, elections uh, for being, uh, for, for have a little more presence uh, on the media. But this guy was, uh, you know, uh, walking all kind of TV shows and he presented papers and talking about this Bilderberg group, you know, Freemasons controlling the politics because the actual president of Uruguay from the Freemason, of course, as Argentina, as Chile, as Colombia, Brazil, as the rest of the world. So, yeah, but yeah. these kind of people, we need this kind of politician talking about this. So we, we need to support any time that someone like him appear in the public television and stand and uh, stand from the truth, we need to support it. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Okay, beautiful. Well, I'm really happy to hear it. And you, you're just knocking it dead out down there. I'm just, you know, we're so proud and and happy to have yeah, you part you, of the Globusters team. You, you just, you're awesome, dude. <laughs> crushing. Thank you. Absolutely yep, crushing. crushing it. Yep. <laughs> All right. And last but certainly not least, um, Jaron, let's come around to you. And what do you got coming up this week? Yeah, just getting back into it. So, you know, obviously a huge thank you for everyone for support and well wishes and everyone's been amazing. And yeah, shout out to Lockwood and Enrique and I don't know, many people who have Skyped me or emailed me or uh, texted me, all those things. So yeah, everything's going to be going good. We should